Hello there and welcome to the first game of today. You're looking at Kimbo, the almighty Kimbo, playing as the partisan tactics. This guy has a lot of work to do and he's chosen a very interesting commander. I'm here with three times world champion Devam. Hello, Devam. Hello, everyone. Um, Kimbo is up against the bit player Isildur, who right now is, without a question, the best player in the game. I think you would agree, agree with that, right, A? Oh, I mean... It's, it's not a question of if A agrees with that, it's who disagrees with that. He's kind of commonly accepted as the best in the world. And, and Dev M, I think, a more, I suppose, a more interesting question. Just as we've got this first 20 seconds, we'll have to keep an eye out, nothing big happens. But um, mm -hmm. where do you think he ranks in the all-time rankings with the likes of you, Love Nest, etc.? Is he up there? I think he is, yeah. He has all the fundamentals down to the wire, so I think he would do very well if he played in those times where me and Love Nest were, I think, in our prime, right? Uh, I think it was fair very well against us at that time. Interesting. So we do have an all-time great here. We have Kimbo, who, of course, has been a problem child for the community because he's been... Sometimes he doesn't take the game seriously. Sometimes he trolls a little bit. But you cannot question just how good he is as a talent, Devon. <laughs> Kimbo, at times, has shown not just flashes of, of brilliance, but moments of genius as well. He's been very good, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Uh, again, the question is, when does he take the game seriously? When he does, he's really good. But most of the time, you'll see him trying to inflict pain on his opponent just by prolonging the game. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that last weekend, Devem. <laughs> uh, so, and I, you know, we call it out these days. We're kind of used to him. Um, and uh, but we do know when Kimbo plays his best, we were treated with amazing squad. games over the years. And, and my yeah. favourite series was him versus Love Nest in ML1 um, la early last year. Anyway, let's start focusing on the tactics and the strategies in front of us. Kimbo's gone for double combat engineers, partisan uh, commander. What does this give him, Devon? Yeah, so he'll have radio intercept. Um, it's a really good ability to scout out what your opponent is stacking. So that's probably, I think, the best ability of that uh, commander. Uh, partisans are also a decent choice if he ends up spawning them behind an MG. Although I don't think in this map in particular it's really that good. Uh, what I would like to say though is that Kimbo already had, I think, a strong early start where he scouted which side of the map his older was going to be at with the MG. And now you can see him kind of looking for a good opportunity to come in with all the conscript squads and the engineers. Yeah, we've got a flamethrower coming on this one in the east, so Kimbo's strong forces are in the east right now. He's just buying time in the middle and the west, just sticking the garrison. It looks like he's going to be going for the cutoff. Can the Grenadiers defend it? Um, I think they can. It depends on... Okay, he had the flamethrower. So this is the, the important timing with this conscript double engineer start, is that you need that flamethrower to be able to push off the... Uh, Austria guy. And here he is, he's going for the cutoff. The flamethrower popped at the right time, so I think he'll be able to. Importantly, there, uh, Dev M, uh, Kimbo was able to separate the MG from the fighting. The MG has not been in the fighting. The Grens are all pushed back with actually quite heavy losses. I mean, if we look at the. Well, yeah, it's heavy versus conscripts. Yeah, 7 8 right now. Yeah, uh, Kimbo saw the perfect opportunity to go for the cutoff because the MG was out of position. That was a really great read from him. Yeah, it was indeed. He's getting a mind down early as well. He's still trying to peg back this grandee. And here comes the first partisan. <laughs> yeah, I saw the, that. A party in the east. I I am curious why you went for those. Uh, usually they are more of a, like a reactive unit. Uh, you don't call them just by calling them beforehand. <laughs> well, how they've been played in recent tournaments, like in the past year, is you upgrade to the tank hunter package. And then you, you just lie and wait for the early Wehrmacht kind of 222 or 251. You try and take it out. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but I mean, he's doing so great in the early game. He denied the fuel, so I think he could have delayed it a bit longer. Yeah. But still, uh, you know, it's the, the safe choice always to go for that preemptively. Oh, now, it sort of says that he himself is an adaptive player. He'll be, you know, he'll change to what you do. Let's see how well he adapts to what Kimbo is doing here. If he's just going to go straight for the 2-2-2. Two, 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 the tried and tested uh, build order of Wehrmacht. It's kind of rinse and repeat, isn't it? 2-2-2 two, 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 pack 40 Panzer 4 every yeah, game over and over. It's, it's how 
how about how well you kind of time those uh, vehicles out? Like, if you get the pack too early and you waste almost 300 manpower before he even has a T70, uh, then you're wasting almost 300 manpower and it gives your opponent an uh, opportunity to come back into the game, basically. So it's always about the timing. Alpern in chat saying, Isilda's bleeding like crazy. He certainly is bleeding a lot. There's a lot of low health grenadiers as well, which means further manpower attrition is to come. There yeah. it is. You can see that he knows that. He's starting to early retreat the squad, but the damage is already somewhat done. So I, 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 I will say that Kimbo is in a really good position right now. That's probably the start he wanted. Now quickly can he get his T70 up now. With obviously the tank hunters um, supporting it, mines being laid as well thanks to the superior map control. This is a, a very good start. And Isilda is not varying his build, he's going straight for the 2 2 2. Yeah. Uh, Isilda has to be careful now with this MG. Uh, Kimbo is trying to look for the flank. But you can see here that Isilda is still playing very well, even in the back foot. Um, he isn't letting uh, Kimbo have a free side of the map, so you'll see that he's split off his forces right away. And he's betting on this 2-2-2 to be enough now to push off the, the squads that Kimbo has for now. Two things about this tournament, everybody, two meta ramifications, is that the players can't play the same faction twice. If they get to the grand final, their factions are unlocked again, but they have to get all the way... Sorry, if they get to the fifth game of the series, the ace game, they get unlocked, but they have to get all the way there playing for all of the factions. And, um, and the other thing is it's double elimination, and now Kimbo in Discord, uh, DevM, was asking what's the point, you know, what's the... Uh, what do I get if I win this series? Do I keep my extra life? Do I get map choice? And he was very keen to iron out the rules before he played today. Which indicates to me, DevM, he had a choice. He was he going to take this series extremely seriously and give it his all, or he was going to just kind of feel it out. And he's showing to me that he's gone for the first option, DevM. He's going, like, full in this series, if that makes any sense. Yeah, he is. It definitely is. Um, I'm not used to seeing his elder struggle like this in the early game, so definitely a great start from him. Let's just see how he handles the 2-2-2 two -two -two for now. Um, I think he has a lot of resources uh, piled up, so we might see a very early T-70. Although one thing that I would say is I would have retreated the engineer earlier to get the building started, and I think he's a bit delayed on that. Yes. One of the points in your guides on YouTube is uh, never have unused fuel, basically. It's the one mm. thing you never want to float, and uh, Kimbo's got it in abundance right now. Yeah, he does. Uh, I think it's going to hurt him not to have that T70 as soon as it could be in the field. Because he put so much pressure on his Ilder, if he had a T70 right about now, his Ilder would be struggling to get a back out. Yes. And uh, the manpower of Isilda is not looking out for neither is the fuel. Man, have this engineer, eight... triple vet. <laughs> oh my god, it's going to repair it on the battle lines later on when we do get the T70 out. We now have the tank, sorry, support weapon, then tank Ovi. So he may even consider a T34 rush here. He's missed the T70 timing. Um, yeah, so I think he's actually going to do that. Well spotted. It, I don't think it makes much sense now to go for the T70, honestly. Um, I would just stack up straight up to the T34. Imagine a T-34, it'll take a few minutes longer, but it's gonna mop up if he plays well with it. Yeah. If he does that, it will be up to his older to now punish uh, Kimbo in the next few minutes. Jibber in chat asks, was it a fake 18 aid? Uh, no, he does have the 18 aid package, so he can throw Molotovs as well. Just a bit of uh, insight there from the looking at the buildings and stuff. Yeah, you can see that uh, Kimbo now is... Trying to stall Isildur, he's just building sandbags and waiting um, for Isildur to come to his own fuel. Oh, he didn't skip the T70, okay. So that's a late T70, I feel like that's a missed opportunity. Devem, you're an aggression player, you're a, you know, you like to snowball and roll over people in, in much the same way Kimbo does, you know, you're not a control player, uh, a turtler, in the classic RTN sense of the word, and uh, what do you start to feel if you had such a good start like Kimbo has, if your opponent starts to like really group themselves defensively, 
you start to panic or do you start to uh what, what goes through your head uh no not really i usually don't panic uh i just try to kind of see how the early game went in terms of uh, resource denial and depending on how well i do i just i just try to i basically play to get the most advantage i can in each stage of the game so if i have an advantage early i'll try to maximize the advantage in the mid game as well so my opponent doesn't have a good late game i always try to play for the you know for the most uh, map presence i can with the advantages i have honestly i wouldn't even yeah, no, no, no problem. Uh, I wouldn't even put fast Kimbo now to even, you know, maybe put more infantry out or like a second T70, just completely deny Isolde right now. Yeah, Although that's more risky. Would keep the momentum up. It's all about that momentum, isn't it? Yeah, it you is. Know, you have to keep it, and that's that's the point I was getting at. You start to feel a little bit like, oh, my momentum's not as strong as it was, and maybe a second T70 would be a way that he could do that, just to do a little bit of theory crafting there. Before we it's see more risky, goes. definitely more risky. Um, I think Kimbo isn't that crazy, to, to be honest. I think maybe he'll go for the T34 next. But Fair we'll enough. see. I, I, I would see Von Ivan doing that more. <laughs> <laughs> or indeed, famously, uh, Alper, when he got that underdog victory over Blood Nest last year. He is the oh, yeah. back. He is the double Bren LMG combo. We're pushing up on the east side. T70 evades the shot. And combat engineers have to watch out here. It's so subtle the way Isilda creeps up in the map. If you see them right now, his older is in a really good position, and the early game that Imbo had almost was denied. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's uh, one of those things that you almost have to watch the cast on half speed to admire Isilda's kind of control and how it creeps up on you. Yeah. To so use sporting analogies, it's, it's like footwork. Good footwork in tennis, in boxing. And loads of these sports is you put the casual fans don't see it and even the commentators don't see it but it's there and all the fundamentals of silver has in spades oh yeah definitely uh, i think it was kimbo's mistake to kind of let go of the gas pedal to be honest um he had his Zilder in a really good position where he was struggling to even reinforce his grenadiers and he let go, he let go, and he's older, you know, you can't let go against him. You have to keep up the pressure. You do. Kimbo's now, his uh, T70 is up to five kills. He's currently capping with it, so he's clearly looking to control the Soviet cube of crossroads in the southeast. <laughs> But uh, this is the anti-Soviet cube map, DevM. This was a theory crafting between me and White Flash saying we can't have these 55-minute games all the time with Soviets in the south. It has to end. And this is the victory point here in the west. That is it's meant to make Crossroads more dynamic, fluid, and aggressive. Mm -hmm. So let's see how that works in this game. Yeah, let's see. He's still there also... He's always very good at positioning the pack and you'll see that it's always on the same side as the D70. It's really interesting to see that. Well, he got a decent headset, even though coronavirus robbed him of some of his hearing, and I can't make this up. Uh, combat really? Engineers, yeah. I don't know if that's personal. Actually, I probably should have asked. Can I use that as a fact <laughs> in a tournament? <laughs> oh, hey, damn, I didn't ask. Top player. <laughs> didn't get clearance. Well, he was saying it to me, so he should have known. <laughs> T70 doing some uh, decent shots mm -hmm. on the ground, but not finding any rewards there. Bakken moving in to deal with the T70. He doesn't want to let that T70 deal with the MGs. Yeah, but the house is in the way. Oh, has he found an angle here? Oh no, the house was in the way. Well played by Kimbo there. Oh, the boss is coming in the flank. I think we'll nice. try to get it with the boss and then the Bakken. He does an S-shaped Faust around the van and the house. The Zis comes out of position here, and here comes the Grenadier, but the combat engineer was lying in wait. MG's coming in in two. Isilda wants this now. He's pulling in the 2 2 2. He's got Grenz coming in from the side. And Kimbo is just getting crushed at the moment. Uh, he's getting out traded in the infantry engagements, so he's bleeding a lot more manpower. And Isilda is starting to stockpile that manpower now. 
gosh he is, yeah, and his fuel. Let's see if he's at Battle Phase 2 indeed. This is looking really grim for Kimbo. I think his only shot now is that getting that T-34 out and getting a really good flank. Yeah, where's he at with that? He does have it up. We had this... Oh, the pack's just been decrewed, has it? Was it? Oh yeah, yeah. it's But not in any real danger. Fair enough. Right, that's four victory points against Kimbo, which is in effect kind of like a triple cap. So he's been bleeding, but he did have a really good start. So we do have a long distance to go in this game. Just for two to two finds an angle here. We've got a pack oh, shot no. in on the T70, but the 18 aid is there to defend. Yeah, I, I just don't see it. How Kimbo is going to hold out against these vetted grenadiers now. Um, I don't think he has the, the tools to deal with that. No, I mean, you know, it may sound silly, but even a Maxim is good substance to help, you know, protect the Soviet cube. Uh, mm -hmm. Mines, Maxims. Yeah, definitely more combined arms. Yeah, basically. The conscripts alone, uh, with one flamethrower and a tank hunter in support, isn't going to be quite enough against vetted grenadiers, like you say. And... You can see that his Ilder is a very controlled player, he isn't like taking any risks at the moment, he's just waiting for his own infantry to go out from his own base and he has like the middle controlled and the center of the map here is really important because you can see the rotations from Kimbo very easily, so having that center controlled is really important. Where the units are right now. We're having to see a Silda push out in the west. He wants to keep his victory point. The Panzer IV comes up. Battles oh, no. on all three fronts here. That P4 is going to hurt. Which way will it go then? What's its first target? T70 is on the east. Pax pushing up as well. Interesting that the P4 didn't go to the right side. So he knew that the Zizgan was somewhere around there. So he. Opted to go to the left side for now. Yep, so we've had basically, they could have gone, they could have attacked each other and had a huge confrontation, but instead we just see two small confrontations. <laughs> could have been a big one that could have all lined up. <laughs> yeah. I think his, his other is just kind of trying to see where Kimbo's units are at, because right now if he rushes the AT gun when Kimbo doesn't have his own tank out, can be really dangerous for Kimbo. Isilda just crushed the corner of the house, which can sometimes result in destruction. That would have been cool. Yeah. Oh, that's a dead conscript. Yep. And that's that Gren. That was the vetted Gren doing the work there. Yeah. Kimbo is falling behind in the infantry, so he'll have to make up for that with uh, his own T-34 and Seasgun wall. Yes, he will. Which might reduce his capping potential. Two victory points in the southeast. Oh, a preemptive oh, need there. Very good, very clever. And what a shot from afar <laughs> by the Panzer IV that obliterates them on retreat. You never know when the P4 is going to do that. <laughs> no. So random. Either a, a P4 can chase somebody into Amelie Fields and miss 10 shots in a row and cost you a <laughs> I tournament. Didn't know. <laughs> Sorry, Dev. <Devin. laughs> <laughs> or it can do that. 2 to 2 is found, however, by the Zistra 4. Can we get a follow up? Probably not. Gets out of there on the road. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Good thing from Kimbo to control the center as well now. If you have like a, a T gun composition, it's also really important to have that center. Yes. Because they can be anywhere at any time, basically. Just they need to move five meters to the left or to the right, and they are <laughs> in range of the enemy tank. So Kimbo's going for the southwest victory point as well to help out, so he'll stabilize his victory point. Don't forget, guys, he's still in the lead on victory points thanks to his good early start. He's using his hot vehicle here on the Panzer IV, just giving it room to reason to reconsider its position. Is, uh, is Zildo backing up? Uh, he went for a second back, okay. Yeah, familiar sight in Company Heroes, top level, two AT guns versus two. And then it'll be a race to rocket artillery. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> I was going to say that, uh, Kimo is probably going for the Ketyusha next, when he sees a second back gun. 
all aboard the Company of Heroes hype train, where the build orders don't matter and the fun is permanent. Uh, the build order from this holder is just so strong though. Uh, 4 Grenadiers and 2 MGs, you can really lock down the map. Yeah. Pantafor deletes the cover of the uh, Contrips. As the T-34 pushes in, we've also got the Ziskans lined up, forcing away the Panzer IV. One more shot oh, to take out, the door packs are lined up here. The T-34 does not penetrate and he's trapped oh, no. and isolated. It's dead, it's dead. Oh, he misses one shot. Not another and he's burning up. And he's out of there. And that's really bad for Kimbo. I don't think he was expecting the second pack and... He does have some time to work with though. Uh, he knows that the P4 needs repairs, so for now it's like the P4 isn't here. Uh, people in chat are saying that was bad RNG. I think that was a little bit too aggressive possibly from Kimbo. Maybe he should have backed out of that one. Yeah, I oh, think it was. T70's in peril. Pax possibly tracking him. Just gets out of the range there. This T70 is all Kimbo has right now to deal with the Grenadiers because his infantry can't really deal with Grenadiers. I think he's just going to be overwhelmed in the next few minutes. Um, his own conscripts can't fight the vetted Grenadiers and this T34 that was basically a hull he had to deal with that. This or one of the important pieces. Are so popular, Dev. And guards with the DP light machine guns are... Oh, yeah. You know, it's the way Soviets kind of get through these games. Maybe he can get the 2 2 now with the Bulls' gun. No? No, it's no change. Oh, and he can't get it anyway. Does this have to go forward past the MG? We've got engagements in these conscripts advance. Oh, the Katusha needs to save us. He's not seen this conscript. He's playing a losing battle, Kimbo, right now. He can only win the side where the T-70 is at at the moment. Because, you know, those Grenadiers are just... You know, eliminating everything. There's no way you can win the engagement. No, he's gonna have to go west side now. Yeah, he's going to have to have all these units on the same side. It's the only way you can win engagements. victory point back it's still still got a slight lead he's reacting quite quickly to the victory points uh, situation katusha's gonna have to get an excellent volley off as well so we'll have yeah. to see what happens when the if the grens group up and the katusha gets a big volley maybe that could help you know what this reminds me of that uh, monty python clip where the guy has no arms and no legs <laughs> that's kimbo right now <laughs> back here i'll bite your legs off <laughs> this but a scratch <laughs> indeed well, he's bravely running away here. Okay. So, yeah, Kimbo is trying to get a hold of the center again, because he really needs to. And again, he has to have all his uh, infantry squads and he's definitely on the same side First of the map. Here, Devam. This could be decent. Uh, he just pushes the units around a little bit, gets uh, one kill only on his first volley. He needed better than that. Yeah, he needs better than that, and he's also basically oh, on the Oh, Tutu on the west side for the Katusha, he has to get out of there, T-70 comes to protect. Uh, one big nice shot attempt. in, can he pursue now? There is a Faust waiting for him, he's gonna go for it, he knows no other way. No, he's backing out this time. That would have that been a really good kill. But what I like is the fact that he didn't go for it. That's that's better from him in, in a way. Oh no, he's gone for it now. The Ziskons need to protect the little buddy. Okay, he knows the Ziskons are there. He's he isn't going to pursue that. Yeah, that's that's smart from a soldier. These are the small things that mean he wins games. You know, he, he knows go... that you know the repair time is enough. It's enough of a win already. Yeah, I guess so. Katusha's got a lot, uh, 40 seconds left on that barrage, and here comes the Wehrmacht. They're going to take the victory points away from him. He knows it. He knows he needs to get there. Kimbo's fighting for his life. He is. Uh, we have a Brumbar being built. That's going to hurt. Oh, no. The Sturm Panzer, the Stupa, is just going to brutalize Kimbo's defenses here. 
It's like uh, you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, don't you, Devon? It's like you've got somebody in a you know full, you mounted them in a full guard position, then you pull out a sledgehammer, then you break their arms, then you break their face. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Well, that's what a brum bear does. You got somebody trying to protect themselves on their back. You know, some uh, black belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and then we get the sledgehammer out. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Kim will survive that. <laughs> this Katusha's gonna need one hell of a volley. He's, he's lining up for a, a colossal, like, shotgun round. That's, that's what he has to pray for, two big squad wipes. I don't think his older is going to let that happen. He knows he has to get used to He's just going to split up the squad. Yeah, we won't expect it in the face. <laughs> oh god, here comes that boy. He's thick with a double C. And... He's gonna smash him. Yeah, and the uh, Devil's is gonna have some work to do right now. The enemy has cut off a sector. Yeah, his elder is smart to back away. He's uh, just going to wait to have his P4 fully repaired, his infantry all ready to go, and he's probably going to crush uh, Kimbo's position. With the system, so that'll be a nice fight. Oh, but here comes have a the P4 flank. though. Yeah. Oh, tank hunters finally make themselves useful. He did destroy the pack, by the way. Small okay. win for him. He needs yeah. more of these. He does. He needs about 10 more of them. And he... <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's in a disconnect. 2 2 2 still alive. Vet 3 now. With his orbital satellite. I think he's. Uh, oh, he's getting a wipe Kimbo. on the tank hunters. They were built to counter the 2 2 2, and now it deletes them almost. That would have been so savage. Well done. We have forced the yeah, you still see Zilda going for his cutoff though, because Kimbo was so far pushed to the right, he's leaving his cutoff and protecting. Marks the Panzer 4, he's trying to get the system to position. Oh no, he's coming closer and closer. Needs some big shots and it doesn't penetrate either of them. That's bad luck there. Just before he's coming around though. Gimbo is doing the smart thing and splitting up his Z gun straight away. Yeah. He also managed to get a T70 penetration thanks to the mock target helping out there. Oh, here comes the tank on something they can help as well. That didn't do my Moral team. victory! Yep. <laughs> There was showing you it would have been abandoned had it not been for tawny mode. Mirage Floor has now coded it, so if it says abandoned, it explodes instead. What is this? What's the T-70 doing? Oh, Katusha's ready. Maybe this could be good. Maybe this could be mm. good. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, why is he attacking the shed? What's the shed ever done to Kimpo? Maybe he should have attacked the Grenadiers instead. I'll tell him that after the game. That'll help. Help his morale. Yeah, Coach E coming through. <laughs> yeah, you see Kimbo. Blowing up the <laughs> shed doesn't win your game. <laughs> I think we need really to coach him. <laughs> Show him pictures. A picture of full health Grenadier squad. <laughs> and a picture of a shed. <laughs> Which one should you use the Katyusha artillery for, Kimbo? T-34 is going past the Panzer IV pack combination. His victory points are bleeding out. He's got f it's a quintuple yeah. cap right now. Five ticks per three seconds. Our opponents are seizing a sector. I don't see a way for Kimbo to break the the position right now. He's going around there. Uh... You've been saying that for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I've been correcting <laughs> up until now, so... You have a... Oh, Umbers. yeah, the, the fast. It's gonna get faster than the pack, and he's already waiting. Already hits the floor, he gets faster. We are losing a sector. It's going to survive. Kimbo is... A vital push-out by uh, Kimbo in the west there taking a victory point and a half. And he's got one in the, the south, so he'll survive for now. 
I like the way he's battling. He's got good psychology at least. Yeah, he's definitely oh. playing to win here. The problem is that the Zildar is playing to crush. Well, I'm just thankful it did because this shed in the north is now safe, you know, so that's good. Uh, oh, I think the game is over. Now. Ah, that's what's happened. Fair enough. Thank you, Devon. You're, you've got a, a, a direct link to the servers and you're... you're Tell him, tell him <laughs> instead of the message coming up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, well played to a soldier. 1-0. Here we go, we've got DevM's webcam now working as well, you'd be pleased to know. Hello everyone. Yeah, that was, uh, again, a great match from Isildur. I feel like Kimo had a really good opportunity in the early game to snowball it and he... He just... He missed time the T70. Yeah. Um, he should have kept the, the pressure, he should have kept the pressure. He should have retreated the Engineer and gotten that T70 much sooner. And then he would have put Isildur in a really tough position. I, I, I completely agree. And we, we commented on the the timings, or mistimings, rather, of the T70 situation. We had chat, like, a few comments of, from, from players in chat were saying, oh, if he goes for a double T70, maybe it could work. But no, I mean, if you either get the T70 earlier or double down and get the T34, there was there was two ways to play that. And unfortunately, he just, he just miscued. He didn't get it right. Yeah. Um, I think Kimbo kind of got to that point where he wasn't expecting to win the early game so hard and he was like, oh, so what do I do now with all these resources? <laughs> what do I, I have I, never got, I never, never got this far against his other <laughs> shit. <what? laughs> Basically. Um, but he, he, he should take confidence from that early game and uh, hopefully his psychology holds out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got a classic Xbox behind you, somebody's commented. Yeah, I got the, the new Xbox and the old one. Uh, it's always That's nice to old, have the... old, old one, though. That's yeah, four it's, Xboxes it's... ago. No, I like that one is the the old one. The OG. And yeah. then I have the new one on the other side. Yeah, but there's two in the middle as well. There's a 360 and there's a one. And you've got the, you've got the Series X now. Yeah. Oh, is that any good? Well, basically, I only use it for Netflix, to be fair. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> I'm so sorry. You bought the equivalent of a top-end gaming PC for Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's so, good. Do you want know the really annoying thing as well? They're completely out of stock all over the world. Everybody wants to play Halo Infinite when it comes out, and nobody can get a Series X. To, well, you can play it on PC, I guess, but people want to play it on Xbox. And, and you have one, but you're using it for Netflix. That's badass. <laughs> it's a glorified Netflix machine, basically, right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I do remember the first, uh, the first one. It was a good console, but we should probably uh, think about watching Kimbo versus Asilda too. It's coming up very, very mm -hmm. soon. Let's uh, click watch game. <laughs> exactly, Nathan. He is flexing, indeed. Let's have a look as well, see if the other series have started yet. Um, let's have a little shufty elsewhere on the, the doubles. Looks like they're getting ready for the lower bracket mm -hmm. finals. That'll be on Olvedi. Or you could watch this same stream, but in Korean, on 101st Airborne. Oh, aren't they also streaming this? Yeah, I think he got the funds for the tournament and organised it with Olvedi. So, yeah, yeah. Just the Korean dudes are streaming this one too. Is there any Korean player left in the brackets or not really? Is there any, uh, what players, sorry? Korean, yeah, Korean. no, no, yeah, that's yeah. why he's casting this one instead. He was meant to be doing the lower where Ashablaw was, but uh, he got knocked out. And it's now a um, creative name versus... I think it's Major Kusanagi, which is crazy. Have you ever even heard of him? 
Um, I saw the other day him playing against... Was it Gimbo? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I never heard the name before, so I'm not sure if he's a new player or not. No, he's uh, like a 2v2 guy converted to 1v1 recently. So yeah, CN Major is, um, is happening in a couple of minutes' time. That's like uh, what happened with the Silver, right? He was a 2v2 player. Yeah, a lot of these guys um, start playing 2v2 and then uh, convert to 1v1 over time. It's like we all start playing... Um, the demo, then the campaign, then versus AI skirmish. <laughs> I'm going to be honest here and say I never finished Company of Heroes 2 campaign. I didn't care past, I didn't pass past like Mission 4, I think it was. And that was only when the servers were down. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh shit. It's the only thing I have to do now, play the campaign. Um, what is your favorite tournament introductory video you you like of the tournaments I've done? I've got them all queued up. You have um... Hmm. Go with the Corona one. Everyone says that. Okay. Let's go with Corona. <laughs> Let's get ourselves... Uh, which one is it? There it is. Isolation has you feeling blue. There's only one thing left to do. The patch is out. Let's play Co2. It's the Corona Cup. And here's a familiar sight. It's a Silda, 1-0 up in a series. That's right. He's versus Kimbo, though, who had a fantastic start in that previous game, DevM. Kimbo's locked yeah. in, of course, Jaeger Infantry. And why has he locked that commander in? That's a really good commander. It basically covers all bases. Uh, you have the G43 upgrade. That's really good on the Grenadiers. Um, the Jaeger Command Squad is also a really good squad if you want to replace that fourth Grenadier squad. And also in the late game, this took a close air support is a really good ability. So it's basically a really good commander in all stages of the game. Fair enough, and if Devem says it, it's got to be. Um, we're going for conscripts from Isilda, pretty standard stuff. And we've uh, got a little bit of time here whilst we just watch the early movements. Uh, Devem, you've made some big comebacks in series in the past when you 1-0 down. Um, what's your best advice for players when they find themselves in a kind of at a deficit? I think, obviously, the most important part is how you handle it mentally. Uh, I've always kind of seen, like, best of threes and best of fives as a bunch of best of ones. So, before each game, I kind of mentally reset and think it, think of it like as a single game. I don't let what happened in the previous game affect the next one, basically. And I think that's the most important part. Fair enough. Break life down into small chunks. Don't let it overwhelm yeah. you. <laughs> it's, what, it's what he's got to do here, indeed. Um, so this is Crossroads X. I have seen a few more Wehrmacht victories on Crossroads X than Allied victories. I will just say that. I don't know how true that. I'd, I'd need Jibber Jabber Jobber to put a spreadsheet together. But um, it does feel the way that, that the Wehrmacht, I don't know, with the MG or just, I don't know, there's something about them. They're building the, only, quite... the only language they understand spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I took my laptop on the first day. Right. Mm. Just filtering out. MG's not been quite active yet. There's a standoff for the fuel. He knows he's there. He knows the MG's there. And then they're not daring to move. Yeah. Kimbo plays the early games in a very loose way. He, he isn't like looping up any of his squads. He's just trying to see where. Isildur is everywhere. I mean, let's go get on board with Kimbo and uh, see what he sees. Let's see his movements and see how he evaluates his opponent. Yeah. I think this is actually really smart from Kimbo. I think he knew that Isildur was going to go for double engineers. So he isn't letting the double engineers do what they do best, which is cap the map, because he just sent one grenadier to annoy him in the field. I like watching the players a little bit more recently. He's still just waiting for that cap in with the MG. He's just sitting there, but he's gone forward with the Grenadier to the victory point in the southwest. He's watching this engagement very closely, Devon. He's looking for that Gren in the east to see when it drops on their health. Yeah. I like this I... from Kimbo. Yeah. Ah, can he stop the fuel cap in the, the north? I think he can, he can, yeah. <laughs> What's happening to his poor Grenadier? He's keeping on it, though, for some reason. Dangerous. I'm not sure why he's getting it there. Like, he has he no traps. reason to. 
Was it dropped? I have no idea. I don't think it was though. I didn't judge the health of it very well. Oh, he's put an S mine here. <laughs> he's put an S mine on the southwest uh, victory point there. Kimbo. Classic Kimbo. Using you know, he used to do that like uh, on the retreat path of, of the unit. So he would make you retreat and you would have an S mine field somewhere in the retreat path. <laughs> he was always very good at that. So you sound like you speak from uh, unfortunate experience there. Let's get off follow <laughs> camera now and leave Kimbo. By the way, we the reason we can't do follow camera mode for Silva is he spends half of his time in TAC map and we can't see that. So it won't be anywhere near as exciting. But, uh, Doesn't Kimbo use TAC map as Silva? He's trying, but I don't think he uses it anywhere near as much as a Silva. It's like he, he doesn't spam it, basically. Okay. We are losing a sector. Okay, but Kimbo has had a brilliant start. Uh, really, his early games have been much superior to his older ones. The enemy has broken our supply lines. Having a sandbag sandwich. Or sandbag witch, sorry, being constructed here. Very good. That is a 1v1 meta in a nutshell. A lot of victory point uh, pressure incoming onto a Silda. Unless you can rectify it. Ah, minesweeper up on the S mine. So no detonations today, unfortunately. Yeah. He already has the camouflage uh, on some of the Grenadier squads. Still has sprints. You may have seen in the balance beta notes that that sprint's getting removed. But the ambush mode does give sprints in this version. Live version. Of it. Now we have to see if Kimbo uses the early game advantage that he has now to actually have a meaningful advantage in the mid game. Well, he's got a double push away in the east, he's holding strong in the west, Evan, so it looks likely to me that he's going to have double fuel for a portion of time. A very strong yeah. start from the Polish player. And you see that his Hilder isn't doing the same mistake, he already has a uh, tank of battalion uh, up. He only needs the fuel now, but as soon as he has a fuel, that T70 will hit as soon as possible. Interestingly, we're having lend lease tactics with oh, such a powerful commander, yeah. um, the Dushka and the Shermans. I'm not so sure about the assault guards, though. I think they are decent, honestly. <laughs> I've used them before, but uh, they they are a risky unit. There was a four grand start for Kimbo, which is uh, you're seeing the benefits of now. He's been so dominant with the four grenadiers. And he has played the early game in a really nice way, because he knew his Hilder was going to go for the double engineer. He just had to split the grenadiers up and not let the engineers cap. Really well done from Kimba. Combat engineer. Gonna erupt in the east with Dushka support. 2 2 2 following up. The MG is going around to the fuel point. He knows that he's always going to try to get that fuel point back. As soon as he suppresses the combat engineer, he can go back in the circle. But not a second longer. But now the Dushka's opening up. He might lose the fuel here. It doesn't matter because he's dominating so many other standard territories. So we go over to the graphs, uh, Devon, for a moment. We can see the KD of Kimbo mm -hmm. is very high. And then the points held graph, which is one of my new favorites, shows how far he's pushed into the lead. Ten uh, standard territory points to uh, five there. Yeah, this is going to be very tough from Isildur to come back from, especially with the uh, 2 2 up and no counters. Oh, Isilda is going for the M5, okay. I think that's he smart, is. actually. He's got the munitions as well for that quad mount meat chopper kraut mower. He has been using the the M5 for some time now. He really likes it. A new uh, track plus, you know, first out of it with, in an ML5, of course, and I think it was the grand final he started using it in tournaments. Yeah. Great effect on uh, Nagano. Not from Nagano's really... perspective, oh. it might must be said. Um, yeah, so Kimbo just lost one Grenadier squad. <laughs> oh, did you catch that? Where did that happen? Uh, it happened on the manpower point that's on the road. Oh, okay. It may have been on the north top of the screen, probably. But they're definitely dead. Just trying to get into this. <laughs> we have visual upgraded. confirmation. <laughs> Thank you, Devon. <laughs> That's what we got you here for. The ability to see things dying. A is blind. 
I don't see why is that he just lost that like that. <laughs> it surprised really me as well, I don't expect it, so sometimes it does go uncounted for. The M17's trying to find an angle here, but Kim has been very good at backing away in time, but it is now allowing Isildur the pressure to push out, and he's doing that right now. Yeah. Let's see if uh, Kimbo can catch the M5 off guard, because the problem with that unit is that it's really squishy. So, if a pack gun gets a shot in, and then the 222 can get some shots in, it's like dead already. Classic last cannon unit. Very squishy but formidable in output. Packs um, pushing up now, coming to the central road. But Silver's already started to get back into the game. It's impressive, isn't it? Uh, but I think it was a combination again of Kimbo slipping up. Yeah, in this case, so that Grenadier dying. That was just lazy by the looks of things. Was it literally just standing there in the uh, the conscript? Yeah, it was. It just oh. yeah, it was like it wasn't even a grenade or something. It was just he just let it die. Maybe it's like some strategy that we aren't seeing now. He has uh, less uh, peep. Amazing. All these room for activities. Pack forty setting up. Oh dear. Attack around him. Two, 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 oh, two, two, two. No. oh what a combo! Bad. That was amazing by Kimbo. He's got a great attack ground off there. 2-2-2 two, two, two finishes the job. M17 down. That's always a risk you take by going the the M5 route. Really well played from Kimbo. Lovely stuff. Let's see how he can maintain this momentum and keep this up. Battle phase 2 costs 105 fuel. And he's clearly getting close to the time. He can start thinking of getting the Panzer IV out. It's gonna, timing is going to be crucial. Yeah, I think he, he's either going to go for one extra infantry unit to replace that Grenadier. Oh, he already replaced the Grenadier. I didn't even see that. So he's probably going to tech up now. Molotov in, announcing the package. Grenz outputs industrious 11 kills already. It's going to be annoying for Isilda to deal with the uh, Tutu now. Yeah, it is. A very annoying uh, scout car, isn't it? It can be. Yeah, it is. Especially if you let it scale to the late game. The vision it gives is just so much. Supporting their brothers, conscripts bleed heavily. That could be a wipe. They were so low on health. Every soldier was. Yeah, I'm not sure how Isildur is going to proceed with this. He must know that uh, Kimbo has a really good fuel advantage, so he's expecting a Panzer IV soonish. Mm. I would imagine. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Zizgan being built soon. Probably after the T-70. Oh, this T-70 is going to have a lot of work to do. Just protecting the victory points, mopping up around the side. It's no longer going to be a shock weapon. Now the Pat 40. And four Faust platforms are marauding. Yeah. Um, but honestly, he has no choice. He has to go to for the T-70. You know when you have those sniper battles and you lose the sniper? Yes. And you just have to rebuild it again because it's a losing battle if you don't. Oh, I've been making like the that. joke for years that the Soviet algorithm is, is T-70 on the field? No, build T-70. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, because not while the patch did change things. The patch last year obviously uh, decreased its uh, lethality and made it more kind of rel uh, paced lethality. It wasn't quite so yeah. killy. Spread out his DPS, didn't it? That's what it was. It wasn't like just bursts of DPSs. Yeah. Our opponents are seizing a sector. You can see what Kimbo is also doing here is very smart. When you are ahead as Austria and you know that your grenadiers can outpace the conscript squad, you can start splitting up your army and you can only win the side where the T70 is basically. Which really puts a lot of pressure. Yeah, indeed. Two on the 2-2-2. He's going to get good vision now. 
we'll be able to see a Sildo coming in. So a player that doesn't spam tap maps that actually uses his eyes <laughs> on the battlefield. That's going to help out even, even more. You mean the exact opposite of Love Nest who doesn't even see the field? <laughs> What I just said makes no sense because the same vision exists in that map as shopping. <laughs> right, west side we've got Grenz just idling, chilling in the bush. Can you see them? Barely. Yeah, I can. He's just Molly. waiting for his next victim. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Molly in on the MG. We've got LMG Grenadiers waiting. Well, two of them now finding the conscripts. Combat Engineer pushes in. A decent angle, what's happening in base? Oh, the pack is already ready. Oh, pushes the T70 away immediately. I am surprised that Kimbo didn't go for kind of the Zilder build with the second MG. It really locks down the map. Panzer Falls are pretty good at locking down the map, so he's still gonna have that. Yeah, I suppose so as well. <laughs> oh, MP4. Those is good. Yeah, the anti infantry Zis guns. Do you remember when the SU-76 barrage was free? Yes, it was a good <laughs> meme tactic that was if you were up against somebody you knew you could beat. Fill five SU-76s and barrage them forever. <laughs> Still have PTSDs of playing against that with Von Ivan doing that. It's just like five of those. <laughs> By the Zis inverting itself to, to be an anti tank gun now. I'm actually surprised that this Hilda has been able to keep up this map control. Um, he shouldn't be able to. <laughs> no, by all rights, with the amount of attrition he's suffered, he shouldn't have had as much as he's had. Yeah. Maybe Kimbo is playing a bit too defensive for what he usually does, but. LMG Grenadiers find their 17th victim in Veteran C3 there. Panzer 4 pushes in against the Dushka. Could actually take it out here, but no finds the T17 set and wants that. Kimbo's going in aggressively yet again with his first medium. Oh, ah, no. takes out the Dushka, changes targets. Nice work. His Yildar can't take those. That's an important wipe. That's one of the reasons he was able to keep map control in the center, don't forget, the Dushka was doing work. Yeah. Oh, incendiary rounds on the conscripts, we've got combat engineers pushing any changes, targets to them. Here comes the Panzer IV, he goes stationary, misses that however. That might be dead. That's important because then the P4 can roll in. It's dead. What a, the... what a push by Kimbo there, Devon. Coming in from the side, now the conscripts turn to die, it's nigh. It, it's there it is. Be. Yeah, it's gotta be. Combat is gonna die next too. If they go for the Zis, that is. Meanwhile, by the way, we've had Grenadiers possibly dying in the West. I was thinking this could be happening. I think the game is already over and it's like that ah, time when you yes. slash L and the game still goes on. Deva, it's not yeah. that I don't trust you, <laughs> but I just want to be sure, okay? So we get a times 80 here. Just make sure that no new things happen, like no new move units move. And yeah, I think you're right. Just one little burst. Okay, yeah, there we go. Ah, the Ziskun just got a kill on the Panzer IV in server time. <laughs> AI took over for AI took over for a soldier, and he did more damage in that moment. Maybe you should play like that more often. Clearly, <laughs> just let the AI play. <laughs> Indeed. Well, the scores are now level. We're entering effectively a best of three. We're saying goodbye to Crossroads X with the scores level one all. There we are. That was uh, an interesting yeah. game. A third game too. What do you reckon, Devon? Uh, I think that Kimbo this time around did better in terms of uh, punishing his older with the advantage that he gathered from the early game, definitely. Um, he also 
when he had the P4 out, which obviously was a power spike for him, he looked to have that push, that GG push uh, in the, uh, the Ziz guns. And he was able to actually get a very good flank in that push with the 2-2-2 and the Grenadiers. Uh, which obviously finished the game right there and then. Uh, he's also He also played very well in the early game. I think maybe he scouted uh, his older a bit and he knew what he was going for. So he split up his Grenadiers and he didn't let his older get that early map control that you get with, uh, with the double engineer start. So really well played. Certainly bloody was, yeah. And he's done, uh, he's done something that's going to make chat a lot more excited now. And that's why I said I preferred that game. Because I want to see, I don't want to see um, underdogs winning all the time. But we all get into the point where we have to ask ourselves, is a Zelda beatable? And Kimbo's just proven uh, something that we, we do know in the back of our minds. But we definitely just want to see it confirmed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like tapping him on the head. You know, you're definitely real, right? We can, we can beat you. It's possible. And uh, Kimbo's done. He can bleed. He can bleed. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next map, by the way? It's. I think it might be Crossroads. Wait, wasn't that the map that we just saw? Yeah. No, wait. It's Crossroads, not Crossroads X with the five VPs. Oh, so it's uh, the three VP version. <laughs> it, okay. It might be. Yeah. Uh... The players I didn't know that both of them were in the in the pool. I know, I know. They're both in the in the pool. Um, I think if Olvadi could see what was what the players were going to do, he just need, he's a new he's a fairly new to tournament organizing. You just basically number one tip for tournament organizers is distrust the players one hundred percent of the time, all of the time. If you give them the option to take the easy road and make things easier to play, and familiarity. They're going to do it. DevM, if I give players Ostrup and, and Mechanized and Crossroads, what do you think they're going to choose? Oh, you're going to see Ostrup and a whole lot of games. And a whole lot of Mechanized and a whole lot of Crossroads. So, unfortunately, it's a little bit of the job of the organizers. they gotta, they got to try and remove the easiest path of resistance sometimes, even if it makes them unpopular. Um, he's done a bloody good job, I have to say. It's been a very good tournament. And nice one to 101st as well for... Uh, um, securing donate not donated funds, Devon sponsored funds for the first time in a bloody long time. How good's that? Was uh, sponsoring it? I didn't know that. It's sponsored by uh, Two Nation. It's a Korean uh, like Twitch donation platform. I didn't know that. Um, obviously, I don't know their name, uh, but it's really nice that he has a sponsor, especially for a company of heroes. I think you have uh, tried to get a sponsor for a long time, haven't you? Yes, and I failed many times, Devon. Failed many times. Um, you know, I, it, the only sponsors I ever got was a Welsh um, cleaning company. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and it was a hundred. It was a hundred pounds. But I had a lot of fan donations over the years. Probably like twenty thousand uh, dollars of fan donations. So, uh, you know, it's clear that uh, I'd rather have that support. So that was fine. But uh, sponsors money, I, w I could have dipped my my hands into the money a bit myself. I could have been like, oh yeah, prize pool for Devon, hundred pounds. A he's going on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it would have been great. <laughs> yeah, I just needed those uh, big sponsors. Uh, maybe for Company of Heroes uh, three, you can get those. I'm I'm I am not doing tournament organizing ever again, unless it's small tiny <laughs> events for fun. But f that, <laughs> I've done my bit. <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> you love doing that. No, I hate doing that. <laughs> Stop. Don't make me do it, please. <laughs> it was like your favorite part. I remember that. <laughs> Which bit? Where, where your computer bug splattered at ESL and I nearly had a heart attack. Just because yeah. one more thing couldn't go wrong that day. It was a very like, nice feeling. And I looked and... over to you with a bit of delay and you, were, and you, you weren't playing. I was like, and I was like no. <laughs> no, not, not again. Apparently, there's somebody that was there, Von Kluge, says, all the blood drained out of my face. And I went white as a ghost. <laughs> not because I thought you were losing, just because I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Please. An organizer's nightmare. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, amazing. that that organization wasn't uh, very good. Good thing you never partnered with them again. Oh, God, no. ESL were trash. Awful company. Awful. Truly awful. 
And uh, if any of them want to sue me for defamination, I'm, I've got evidence of how bad they were because they gave me a credit note <laughs> uh, for the costs. So, yeah. Um, right then, let's see if this third game is on its way. Yeah. Uh, so now they can't play the same factions, right? No, they have to play a different faction. So probably USF and OKW in the next match, right? More than likely. Yeah. Uh, basically not Brits. You just um, you, you added up the amount of factions there, Devon. You you took away Soviets, <laughs> Fairmat and Brits, <laughs> because nobody plays Brits, right? Nobody. Well. Maybe helping hands us, but he hasn't, I think, participated in the tournaments. And all these players are very lucky they ha he hasn't, because if he had, oh, would have been very yeah, difficult. If helping story. hands, uh, was, you know, if he takes this seriously, you know, his other stands no chance. He would play, but it's a subscriber's Saturday today. And he's got <laughs> he's got schnapps to drink. <laughs> Why am I always dissing yes. hands? I'm sorry, hands. If you ever listened to the clips of this. <laughs> Yeah, You're some just... knives to evaluate. <laughs> We're all here evaluating our lives. Hans is there evaluating knives. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, anyway, we love you, Hans, if you're listening. We do. Yeah, I still have his uh, kind of business card he gave me. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, yeah. You don't, you don't have That's because you uh... love anime. You're a big anime fan, so you kept it for later, you did. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Take it back to your bunk. Anyway. And he's playing bowling today. Oh, shit, I think he's going to die. Can't see the game as have started quite yet. No, it, it doesn't. Ah, good. Okay, fair enough. So we got a bit of time to kill. Paintball, you should stream that. You can stream IRL, can't you? That would actually be very good content. Paintball. Yeah, <laughs> I would love that. Oh. I wonder if he went dressed with like his uh, World War Two stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he's very tall though, so he's making himself a target there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Devon, shall we tell everybody the, the funny story about the time you nearly missed your flight? Back from GCS one, was it GCS one or GCS two? That... GCS two. I think it. Yeah, I think it was two. Maybe. Um... Yeah, it was two. Yeah. Basically, I was dropping people off at Manchester Airport, and um... you went against traffic at some point. Are you wanted? Yeah, to... we were. We hit a lot of traffic, didn't we? And I was like, <laughs> and we were getting close, and and you were like, nah, it'll be fine. And I was like, are you sure? And everybody, and everyone was like, hey, chill, it's gonna be fine. And I was like, yeah, but the traffic in the airport, there won't be any traffic, Matt, it'll be fine. And then lo and behold, there was a crap ton of traffic. So I went into panic mode. I was like, right, Dev M, you, you, you're going to have to run. And he was like, what? <laughs> Got a huge I, I... backpack on. <laughs> so he gets out of the car, my crappy car at the time. I can't remember what it was. It, been, it wasn't a Yaris. I think it was some Hyundai or something. He gets out and he starts like jogging. <laughs> no, not jogging. Walking. It's a, a power walking. Was, <laughs> not even power. It was semi power walking. It was very frustrating because, and I was like, screwing up the it's like, God damn it, you did it again. I can't believe this. God <laughs> damn it. It's me, Jan, and it was um, that guy. What was his Loveness, name? Yeah, wasn't it, wasn't Loveness there as it, well? Or I am can't I? Remember. No, it was. I think Loveness may have been there, yeah, as well. And we were all screaming, "Run, Devon! You're gonna miss the flight." So he runs. <laughs> And then, and then the traffic clears, <laughs> like past that roundabout. I get past the roundabout, and the traffic clears. So I start driving at like twenty miles per hour, and then we catch up with Devon. <laughs> <We're screaming. laughs> yeah. And I get back into the car. <laughs> get back in the car, Devon. It's actually so funny. <laughs> get back in the car, and then um, and and, and it's it's so funny. So. Then the car's driving, and then we get to the uh, the terminal, not to the car park. I'm like, Devon, get back out of the car, run! <laughs> so you have to run again. He's, you're sweating by this point. You're sweating. You get a backpack on, you're running. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Legio somehow knew... He knew someone. He knew the terminal 
security because he works security. He knew the terminal security somehow. I don't even know how that works. He went with you, this big burly guy, <laughs> and you're quite, you know, you're a short guy, so there's a huge mm. figure leads you like, yeah. boom, 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 and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> like you go off together. <laughs> <laughs> And apparently he's like screaming at you to run up the escalator. <laughs> so you get there and he's like, no, no, go up the escalator, Devon, go up. <laughs> That's quite a good impression. Isn't it? So you get there and then he gets tells the guy on the terminal to let you through. And if he hadn't done that, you would have missed the flight. Is that right? I would have, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I still ran to the airport anyway, even after that. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. At least you're coming through. Yeah, he came through for us. Never trust a E with, a, you know, taking you anywhere. <laughs> Get there on time. <laughs> or accommodation. <laughs> oh, dear. A lot of good stories from those uh, those tournaments we did. Still, I still would love to do, like, a cool, chill-out GCS3, where everybody that wants to play just turns up on the day kind of thing um, in Denmark. But, unfortunately, COVID wrecked those plans a little bit. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough now to kind of organize that again at least anytime soon it was meant to be gone by this summer so we were organizing it for this summer but then yeah unfortunately it just wasn't to be um let's uh ah we got the game it starts in three minutes time do you actually have the funds to do that again because you stopped the the uh, donations right um no but it would be pretty easy to do you just say everybody that turns up puts a hundred quid in uh and that's it the hundred pounds pays for the venue pays for the shit and then all the rest over gets to put in the prize fund and they'd be like i don't know 500 for the winner but that's mm -hmm. it i was saying i wouldn't do as a big grand mega super duper tournament it wouldn't be the yeah, grand just like championship series it'd be the slightly grand champion <laughs> <laughs> Um, if if they give us observer mode, Rachel, yeah. If not, maybe not. They'd have to have observer mode, or may maybe you could do it like watching over the players' shoulders and just screaming at them. <laughs> uh, backseat anyway, gaming. We... Yeah, backseat gaming. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have it, Prabhati. We got it in two minutes' time, my friend. So don't you worry. I'm just gonna grab uh, some water, guys. I'll be back in a second. Um, Dev, do you need water or a toilet break or anything? Are you okay? Oh, here I have. I have my water with me. So <laughs> wow, <laughs> uh, amazing. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Wait, is uh, Star Wars in chat? Hello everyone, by the way, since we are all here, I can advertise. I'm thinking on doing like a long ass uh, stream from unranked to rank one. So if you guys want to join me on that, I'm still not sure when I'm going to do that, but I think it might be interesting. I'm thinking on doing it with... Uh, USF maybe, but I can do it. I think with any faction. Just not sure what people are more, you know, eager to see. And in one very waking moment, we are now live with Kimbo, who is on the comeback trail. He's leveled the scores at one all. He's playing as the United States forces. And he's up against a veritable beast in the oh. north. Who's he up against, Devem? Yes, he is. He's up against his Zilder. Uh, 
Isolder who has been wiping out everyone left and right for like one year now. And he's playing as OKW, a very aggressive faction. Aggressive faction versus aggressive faction makes for an interesting conundrum. I've always liked this matchup. It was often calls for the Puma in use, but uh, in recent times we've been seeing a lot more flak half track, haven't we, Devon? Yeah, we have. Uh, I would still give the upper hand to OKW in this matchup because I do feel like it's easier for them to control the match uh, in the Volks Grenadier versus the Rifleman matchup. Um, but overall, it's always very interesting to see because both factions obviously want to be very aggressive and very light vehicle centric kind of play. Let's, let's have a little look at the commander. So I just showed that Silda has grand offensive doctrine and he's not going for Panzer Fuse Leas at present. What, other, other than the Tiger tank, what does that tend to bring him, uh, Demo? Yeah, so usually you don't want to get the Panzer Fuse Leas early again in this matchup because otherwise you're going to get rolled by the Rifleman. But I, I would imagine that he maybe will grab one of them later on so it can scale into the late game. And the smoke bombs are actually good to, you know, break the position from USF because it's probably going to go for the HMG anyway. Um, yeah, other than that, the Panzer Commander that you can get on your P4 to artillery the AT gun is also very good. Yes, it's very anti-AT guns, isn't it? Um, yeah, it the is. The M1s are going to have their work cut out for them. Meanwhile, Kimbo has gone for recon support com uh, company, which the cluster mines, again, are anti-AT guns or Raketenwerfers in this case. You know, the M8 Greyhounds are, you know, a mainstay of company heroes. And, uh, yeah, doubt we're going to see the INR Pathfinder, so you don't often see them. Yeah, uh, I think it's a bad choice to go for them, especially against uh, OKW, where you expect for the, uh, the game to be very action-packed, and the Pathfinder is usually preferable, or more of a static position kind of game. Note this for new or casual players here. Kimbo's making use of the angles of the cover there. He knew that the Stone Pioneers would have the advantage, so he cut off the angle, cut out the cover. They do advance, though. They've only got one Sturmgewehr. The first Grenadiers were helping them out. There's a double retreat there. Meanwhile, in the east, it is a Panzer Fusilier out next for Isilda. Yeah, right now, I think Kimbo is doing very well. Uh, this is the start that USF once against OKW. Isildur is playing, I guess, the late game game a bit because the Panzer Fusiliers are very bad early on against the Rifleman. So he's expecting to lose the early engagements because of that. Because of the Panzer Fusiliers, I would also expect Isildur to go for the battle group, usually because he wants to get those G43s in every Panzer Fusilier squad. Um, you get the healing from the truck, so you don't need to spam munitions with the Stern Pioneers. It's such an expensive upgrade. It does give them an ex extra soldier, of course, but uh, yeah, it's, it's 80 munitions, which kind of means that your first M8 or Stuart or whatever it is you're going to build is not going to run into any mines in the, the early to mid. Yeah. Now, the question for me is, how can we think to approach the mid game with the advantage that he has from this early game? Because I think that he didn't punish Isildur enough in that first game. The second one was alright, I guess. Isildur is also the kind of player that he likes the OKW after act, the flak after act. Yes. He's really good at using it to deny uh, the fuels for his opponent. So I would imagine that we are going to see that. Don't forget as well, for 100 munitions, we can actually get two Panzer Shreks on the Panzer Fusilier. It's a five-man squad with Panzer Shreks. It's, it's pretty beefy against uh, light to medium armor. So with the flak, um, they're quite good protection for it. Not saying he's going to do it, Devon, but it is a possibility, mm -hmm. you know. It's a possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. Um, M8, is it M8 or M20? Let's just double check. It's, it's M20. the M20, yeah. Interesting. Oh, he doesn't have the M8 in so that's... Yes. Clever, clever me. I think that the M20 is a bit hit or miss. Uh, really depends on how well you can maneuver the M20 throughout the map and look out for lone squads. If anyone can do it, it's Kimbo. He's, he can be really annoying with these. 
We have removed the victory point, but we've added a standard territory point to this map, so they're going to have a little bit more resources to play with in this game. You're going to see things out a little bit sooner. 20 claims its first kill. Skirts are on their way. Don't want to get too close to the folks around here, lest they get fasted, but maybe he doesn't mind. Maybe he just wants the... Yeah, he just wants the damage, and Isildur does not want yeah. to sustain that manpower loss. He knows that it's too early for Isildur to have a counter out, so even if he got fasted, it wouldn't... It, you know, it wouldn't have meant that the M20 died there. So, very smart from Kimbo. I credit yours and the Love Nest series over the years with popularizing the idea that if you're not worried about the follow up to the Faust, just drive in, keep your vehicle stationary, and take it. You know, I, yeah, saw, many, I saw a lot of that in both in your two series. Um, you know, the T70s especially, just driving up, getting Fausted, and come at me, bro. You know, even though you're giving vet to your opponent, I, I think that it's more important that you're making him waste munitions. Because munitions are going to be used to upgrade his infantry with STGs, with G43s. And that's going to be more painful. So if you can deny those munitions for longer, then yeah, it's, it's great. First G43 upgrade here, Panzerfusilier's kills are going to ramp up very quickly now. Yeah, it all depends on how Kimbo can pressure his elder, because those uh, Panzerfusiliers will just scale into the late game very well, so he needs to punish this. Some new players in chat that have just watched uh, the old, uh, my old YouTube channel and seen a few videos, like what they've seen, they've downloaded the campaign. Well, welcome to the community, uh, Razard Wartsy. Hope you like what you see, and it's two of the best players in the world fighting. Off against one another right now. And we have the flak after a cut, I was expecting. Grey. Dealer of death, destruction, and all things suppression. <laughs> kind of makes you go Captain M1 as soon as you see it, doesn't it, Devin? You're just thinking, how quickly can I get an AT gun out? Yeah, it does. Um, it's definitely tough to kill it with the Stuart many times. If uh, you're playing against a good OKW player, you always ask, ask that flak after a protected, right? So it can be very annoying to kill it without an AT gun present. Jibber in chat says, if those go this goes to an ace game, do they have to play Brits versus Brits? <laughs> Apparently not, no. This is um, a situation where the it's basically all the factions get unlocked again, and the VP leader gets to choose their faction first. Is this bazooka attacking on that? Yes, it is! Clever by Kimbo. He's jumping in and out. He sees two G43s, though, and nope's out of there. No back in. Wants to get Cheeky Bazooka round off. Gets it off. Out of there. Gets needed and runs away. The Kimbo Cheeky. always does this, and he gets away. <laughs> he can't keep getting away with it. His elder is expecting the steward, but I don't think Kimbo has plans to go for the steward, I would imagine. Otherwise, we would have already seen him open up a bit of his manpower for the steward. Yeah, seemingly so. Definitely, you know, you would expect Captain M1 all day, every day, which is going to lead us to that familiar meta at some point. We've got an MG34. Isildur often follows up the King of Suppression with his apprentice um so he's just going to start locking down the map it's fortunate for kimbo that this isn't five vp crossroads basically yeah we are probably going to see the double mg again and the thing is uh, the the panzer fuzzleers are really good units to control the light vehicles because they have such a long snare range okay, we'll see it here the anti-tank rifle grenade 25 munitions slightly longer range than the faust Verfus out. Okay, smoke used. Kimbo has many options here. Um, not sure what he's planning to do. I think we might be seeing a flank here. We also have BARs on the rifleman. That's really good. Yes. He's making good use of his munitions. He's not. No, he's got a bit of fuel flow, but he can... I wonder what he's thinking here. I feel like against OKW as USF, um, the earlier you get these BAR upgrades, the better, because 
you can rack up the veterancy while the Volks don't have SCGs upgraded and while they are weak. So if you can get that nice timing on the BARs, it's really helpful against OKW. Boys, you ready to roll out? Spence has only gotten two kills so far, but it's kept Isilda busy, and that's the thing you don't see a lot of the time. It's not just about kills, it's about pressure and just maintaining your opponent's attention. A lot of the time. Point is under attack. So here we yeah. go. Is Captain next? It is Captain next. He's just got a lot of fuel in the bag though. Is he possibly not managing his fuel economy as well as he could, Devon? What do you think? Uh, I think he just has a plan to get the Major out as soon as possible. So he's going to skip the Stuart and the attack. MA. Not sure if I agree with that, because I do feel like against his Elder, you can kind of surprise him and yeah, let him out of his comfort zone if you go for those light vehicles, but... Decided to skip it. Flax in the east, rifle suppressed. Got good application of pressure in the center of the Stern Pioneer MG34. It's only a rear echelon in the west. Kimbo's getting pushed up, pushed off on all three fronts right now. Yeah, those Panzer Fusiliers are starting to get online. Um, they get so strong with those G43s. Bot drops uh, combat group coming in. Paratrooper and a pack howitzer. Not sure if I'm, <laughs> you know, confident on the way Kimbo is playing this. Uh, I think against a player like Isilda, he really knows how to, you know, get a win from the mid game pressure. And Kimbo is going for a build order that's really what just weak. What happened for to the time. paratroopers? They all died. Yeah, they, they all fell they into the bushes the and died. Yeah. They hit the bush of death. <laughs> and those the are bush the bush that knows no fear, only hatred. <laughs> it destroyed them. The Silver's <laughs> plan is complete. <laughs> well, Ivan also has a thing against Edru. <laughs> Two hundred manpower was we're hearing in chat. Two hundred manpower to a twig. He's lucky that one survived. Can you imagine if you lost the whole squad? <laughs> People in chat saying it's over. Maybe it's just Axis day today. Only Axis wins today. And that's after we... Uh... Yeah. Kimbo is in a really bad spot right now. Uh, he's really struggling for manpower. And tier 4 is coming up. Oh, he gets a good shot in with the bazooka there. Can he get follow up? No attack ground with the M20. Wait, maybe he can so. get tier 4. That would be really good for him. Oh, yeah. Good point there. Oh, he's going for it. I think he'll be able to get it. This will be huge. He's another bazooka round. He's not being suppressed quite. Yeah, and he gets it. That's big. That's big. That buys uh, Kimbo. Some very needed time. So he buys back the time he lost with the incredibly poor par paratrooper <laughs> landing. Not sure if that's enough still though, but all depends on how this back how it's her, uh, performs in the field now. This looks like a death ball from a Silder, and this isn't even his full army. He's protecting the east right now. He's still pushing away everything Kimbo has. I'm surprised he hasn't capped those uh, three points on the south of the map. Yeah, I think that's coming next, Ever. Okay, we've got a double push away there. We've still got a squad up in the north. The Flash just found it. Yeah, tier 4 is coming up again, and, you know, the main problem here for Kimbo is not really the fuel, it's really his manpower, because the build, when if you go for Captain and Lieutenant, and you don't really manage your manpower very well, then you get in this position where you don't have the manpower to adapt to what your opponent has, and he doesn't have an AT gun ready for the P4 that's coming in soonish. Well, yeah. 
You're exactly right. I mean, his manpower income per minute is 218 right now, which is pretty damn low. He's got paratroopers that bleed. The three rifles that bleed, and both officers are still alive. So, if you look at a soldier, he's nearly at 500 manpower with a bigger... Actually, they've just equalised on the population cap fronts. But, uh, yeah, it's looking good for Izzy. Yeah, it is. He's in a, a better position. I don't think that Kimbo has a way to deal with the Flak Aftrock in a good way. Which is important because if he doesn't deal with it, he can't get the fuel. Double G43, double Sturm Gewehrs, all on all the infantry now for Silda, so his fighting power is a lot stronger. He can stay in battles for longer as well. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see a way for Kimbo to really come back from the position he put himself in. <laughs> Some pioneers push forward, Flak. Now has seven kills. Yeah. And here come the cavalry in the center as well. The is looking to snub this out and claim another, a third uh, Axis victory. We've got um, Imperial Dane writing the script today. <laughs> Where are the stucks? There to come. And the lieutenant's dead. That'll help with the manpower income. Oh, his manpower <laughs> income shot to 236. He's back in the game. <laughs> Stunks. Gets Bazooka up on the rear echelons. Captain's going to go for the, uh, the Browning. This airdrop was the worst airdrop ever. 380 manpower, 80 munitions. He lost a further 200 manpower to deaths from the twig. And, uh... Honestly, I think Kimbo was just kind of winging it. It's like, oh, let me see what this ability does. <laughs> but he's got one kill on his paratrooper. He's got three kills on the pack out, sir. And, as you say, 500 manpower. It was basically a... You might as well have pressed enter forward slash L. That's actually correct. <laughs> <laughs> we have a second Rocketon building. Oh, Captain could die here. Oh no. Kimbo's the building. gonna see it. Oh, he's out of there. Well, we did see that uh, this happened in game one. Similar situation. Kimbo heavily down. And it is 3 VP crossroads this time, so there is more staying power, there's more... Yeah, but you are playing against um, OKW as USF coming into the late game. It's never like a pleasant uh, battle, unless you have, you know, M8A1s and Jacksons. And I think he's very far away from that. I just don't see a way that you can deal with the infantry that his Hiller has and the P4 that's coming in. Doesn't have the tools. Nice bazooka volley here. Does he get the 18 aid off? No, he was suppressed, decreasing the range at a vital moment. He pushes forward through the smoke. Pack out, it's a... Hits him oh, in the face. Get in the tier 4 range. Oh, here it comes. That is unfortunate. I think the only way we'd come back is if you can get the cheeky M20 mine and you get somehow the P4 kill. Kimbo's grenade was not very good there. He's trying to predict a soldier's passage. It did not work. And the Englishman's coming back very strong now with the Panzer IV following up as well. Yeah. Kimbo does not have an M1 AT gun. He does not really have the resources to keep reinforcing his army and build one easily. He has a choice here, Devon. He builds an M1 AT gun or he reinforces his units. It's a losing battle anyways. If he goes for the AT gun, then he loses all map control because he can't deal with the infantry. And if he reinforces the infantry, he loses anyway, because the P4 will just destroy him. There he's just... No way. <laughs> no. You've been um, very... You're a very, very good caster, Devon. But today, your role has been the harbinger of death. <laughs> you're like... Well, the thing is, he's missing an arm, a leg. His facial features are mangled. <laughs> the ambulance just rolled over him. 
Hey, I just spit facts in what I <laughs> Yeah, you're going all the way. Back. Oh, we just had he jumped out of the crew to continue the assault. No, to repair oh, the no. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, GG. Yes. Panzer IV was you, Devon. And the M20 was uh, Kimbo's. Hopes and dreams. Hopes and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> the enemy has cut our supply chain. Our oh, resource sector has that? been isolated. Axis seemingly is OP according to chat. And uh, is that the server delay? If, yeah, it if is. he just dies, we get to see this happen though, so that's cool. Relic you tease! <laughs> you <laughs> bastards! Right. Devem, please make some explosion noises. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I'm trying to see if I can find one of those flying bowlers that. Uh, oh, I found the other day. That's the other always day. helpful. <laughs> I was watching that. It was really funny. They're all dead, everybody. Devon wasn't very helpful, but uh, <laughs> I managed to make it work. Right. right then, two one to a soldier. Let's go. There we go. So we got uh, Kimbo on OKW next. Or Brits. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, it's, he's definitely on OKW. Isilda's got USF or Brits. Yeah. That's how it works. Again, I feel like Kimbo had this early game lead and he did nothing with it. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. He didn't snowball the game in any way. And as USF, that's really important. Um, he skipped the light vehicles. I think he was just too fearful of Isildur's play denying the light vehicle play. But if you come in with that mentality, you will lose anyway. I, I Yeah, completely agree. And I think the, I know we don't want to keep saying it, Devem, because we use the exact same analysis in our other game, but his uh, mismanagement of his fuel economy, again, uh, not capitalizing on his epic gains, bro. You know. Um, yeah. So it's like, why isn't he using his great early game to snowball the game? I have no idea. No. And and, and you're perfectly placed. D don't forget, guys, that DevM was rocking this aggressive snowball, um, snowballing kind of strategies and tactics since like 2012 in tournaments. Uh, although Kimbo and DevM do have some differences, they have a lot of similarities in their approach. So, yeah, it's it, we're perfectly placed to analyze what Kimbo's done wrong as his allies um, so far. Um, Devon, you have some news on your uh, streaming. You're going to do some interesting streams coming up, aren't you? Yeah, I actually spoke with Chat about that earlier when you were gone for a second. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, feel yeah. free to say it again. Yeah, so I'm thinking I'm doing a really long stream and rank to rank one. My only doubt now is which faction I'm going to play as. Uh, but I think people already mentioned that maybe USF is the most interesting to play as. Also the most challenging, I would say. Definitely. It's the faction you're most known for. And uh, yeah, it's really challenging playing USF, even as a mid-rank auto matcher such as myself. It just seems to have... The other factions seem to have worked out how to mitigate what they do, from my experience. Uh, namely OKW, actually. OKW's really tough not to crack as USF at the moment. I find personally. Yeah, um, it is. I do think it extrapolates. I often think the mid rank is the top rank, but much slower, worse, with worse preservation and under understanding of what's happening at any one time. But a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the things that happen in the meta affect both quite similarly a lot of the time. Um, it's where you get to the yeah. low ELO, kind of lower where the crazy fun stuff starts to happen. And I've been doing some uh, Nuva Olympics uh, casting <laughs> recently, where it's really fun because it's not the same old rinse and repeat strategies that we see everywhere else in auto match. It's just like they just click things and see, kind of like Kimbo did with the airdrop battle group. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. that, but all the time. <laughs> I saw one of those videos. 
<laughs> Which one I think was it was it? USF against uh, an OKW guy. And it was on Colony Firma. Oh, yeah, it's the one where the OKW turtled and built, like, everything and put it in one little tiny Yeah, it was, it was. <laughs> it was amazing. It was, like, it was actually really entertaining. Because you're never sure what they're going to do. No, that's what I'm trying to say. So what I'm trying to say is the mid-rank... Uh, well, everybody in Twitch is probably around the mid-ranks and just mulling around. We all try to emulate the top level. But then there's those heroes down in the nether regions of the game that just play. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, so, yes, let's... Uh, Kimbo's game is online. He's got two minutes until it's on our screens. Um, let's load it up. Yeah, I see it. Ha! Nagano says, can we make an all show match? Dev M versus Lovelace on Crossroads. Only if we've got a spare five hours to spend. <laughs> <laughs> the last series you had was pretty long, wasn't it? Versus him on Crossroads. It was. It's actually very mentally draining as well. Um... Because at some point I had the advantage for most of the game, and at some point he came back. Yeah. And I was losing all map control, and I kind of had to stop myself in the moment and think about what to do next, because I was doing so many mistakes now. <laughs> and I had to do a mental reset mid-game and kind of slowly come back with m 8 ones You know it's a good uh, game of Gummy Heroes when you have like a half time in your own brain. <laughs> you yeah. get to have a meta conversation right with yourself. Like, right, come on, I can do this. <laughs> it was actually like that. I was like, okay, fuck, you're screwing up too much. Let's uh, stop and think for a second about what you can do here. <laughs> this is why maybe StarCraft is the more uh, more competitively orientated game. Because in this mm. one, you can, you can have a break and talk to yourself. <laughs> Usually when you retreat your units back to base, you can be there and think, hmm, what should I do now? <laughs> you have that time. In StarCraft, you don't. No, unfortunately not. All right, then. We've got some interesting... Uh... Yes, Alpern, he did. Slightly... You were around at that time. You, were... I remember Alpern's name in Twitch chat, like, forever. And now he's one of the biggest streamers. But we were all around back in the day when the famous tactic of uh, buying time was a thing. Uh, oh, you mean talisman, basically. <laughs> Draining your opponent. Yeah, that was a good one. Inka Una is a, a player that's coming to the fore recently from Romania. He's oh yeah, I saw him playing USF, right? Yeah, he's, he's pretty decent, to be honest. Yeah, he's pretty decent. Oh. It's live. Let's hit it. Right, let's go. Isilda may be 2-1 up in this series and on the cusp of imminent victory, but another man lies in his wake. And this man is uh, Kimbo, and he has other ideas, Devon. Yeah, he does. Um, I think if he evaluated what he did in the past few games, he really has a shot at winning the game, honestly, in the series. Um, he just needs to control his healers early game, and like he did in the previous games, and then just snowball from there. I think it's We've very asked... possible. Yeah, let, let's hope so. I genuinely, I say that just genuinely. I'm not even going to hide biases. I actually want Kimbo to win this game without room reservation, no caster bias, because Isolde is an unstoppable monster. And right now, Kimbo is uh, a lowly hobbit venturing forth against the King of Gondor. Um, so, somebody's just asked in chat, what is the map called? Well, this is a brand new map made by <laughs> KPEN97. It's brand new to the game. I'm really hoping that Relic will implement it soon. It's basically built around the idea that the territories cannot be cut off. There are no cutoffs on this map. And I, I, I'm interested to see how it's going to work. It's very garrison intensive, which is uh, just basically like a small, tiny uh, village in the center. And then the rest of it's pretty much unimportant. Uh, new map, Devam. Let's see how it plays. Yeah, I'm, uh, 
and the players are definitely winging it um, how to play this map. Um, really new. Brand new, yeah. My, maybe my joke wasn't as funny as I thought. Either way. No, I thought uh, it was funny. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, got rear on set up in the southeast with a nice little barbed wire tank trap contraption. Northwest, that's where the action is. That Stern Pioneer is in this very OP section of green cover that everyone loves to flock to. Yeah, uh, it really stalls your opponent from getting that fuel. Um, Isildur is doing the right thing here. He's blowing up his rifleman and looking for the lone Volksgrenadier or the lone Stern Pioneer. He's also going for the cutoff, so... Already, I think Isildur is doing very well. He is, without a single person dying. That's the levels there are to analyzing this game. Devon can tell you you're doing well before anybody's been shot. Well, it's like, a positional battle, you know what I mean? <laughs> it is, it's like chess indeed. You, sometimes in chess battles you don't see any pieces taken for the first 20 minutes. Uh, Rifleman pushed forward against Fox Ground here. He has neutralized mm -hmm. the cutoff, but it is temporary. Fox Ground has pushed them away. Stern Pioneers get that classic Kimbo. Retreat, kill, engaged. But still, this was uh, great from Isildur because he put on the pressure when he knew that it was the only time he could be able to because he went for a lieutenant as a third unit. So because of that, he was expecting to lose the early game anyway. So the fact that he got even a cutoff uh, done, it's really good. And also he's been able to keep his own cutoff and his yeah. own fuel. So yeah, I see what you're saying, Devon. He may have lost uh, four soldiers there versus only one death for Kimbo. But uh, in terms of resources, he's done all right. Here come the boys, though. Kimbo's pushing in for that cutoff. But another Panzer Fusilier on its way. It's the same build order. Yeah, it is. Um, but I think that this M20 might hit a little bit earlier. Not sure if Kimbo is just copying what his older is doing at this point. <laughs> not, <laughs> not sure. No, I, I genuinely feel like in scrims in the unspoken shadow realm of Company of Heroes, where the Observer... Uh, mode is turned off. I think people develop strategies that the top players kind of agree. Yeah, two folks, two uh, Panzer Fusiliers, that's the way we play, baby. Um, that kind of thing happens and the fans don't get to see it until tournament time. Yeah. We also have the 50 call being built already. I think Isilda is already thinking on being more aggressive than Kimbo was last game. Tell you what, though, we are starting to see the signs of OKW start to come up. The Stern Pioneers are going to help out with both battles here, and the riflemen know it, so they've been pushed away. So, this is an important battle in the east now. This lieutenant mm -hmm. has to hold a line. The M20 is going to come just in time to help out. Yeah, um, these are the moments uh, where Isildur is going to start having the advantage. The M20 is out, uh, 50 call is also going to be built, so in the next minute or so it's uh, going to be really important to see how Isildur does, how much map control he can gather with the, this early game start. Kimbo retracts his units, he threatens the anti-tank grenade, but he doesn't want to do much more than that. He's going to lie and wait behind the bush until the rocket and Verfa comes back out. I tell you what, DevM, this game has a lot of hype behind it. One of the reasons, uh, one of the biggest reasons the players want to win this one is to get to the grand final unscathed. They don't want to go down to the lower bracket and have to face either Creative Name or Major K. But also, they don't want to play again today, DevM. They don't want to be tired and have to think of they've got another best of five waiting for them. So uh, there's multiple reasons to want to be the upper bracket finalist in today's grand final. Or next yeah, Saturday's definitely. grand final, sorry. <laughs> you have a much easier road if obviously you don't fall into the loser's bracket. I don't think Isildur knows that feeling though. <laughs> no. He won the World Championships 2020 Double Elimination Tournament. He won ML5 Double Elimination Tournament. He likes these. He doesn't even know they're Double Elimination. He's just like, I gotta <laughs> just... fight this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> He's never lost a life in double elimination tournaments. That's quite the stat. Oh, we can't and we have the ambulance out. I'm expecting BARs to be upgraded soon as well. Oh, no, never mind. He's going for the steward because he's expecting the flak after track probably. 
and then the BARs. Not a bad way to keep the pressure up, but I just feel like uh, Kimbo's going to be in a decent position to get the Panzer IV in, the, in a really quick time at this rate. He's had good standard territory point control, Devon. I think it depends if he decides to skip the flag after or not. If he goes for it anyway, it's going to be the same as in the previous game. Um, the P4 is going to do, be delayed a little bit more. But obviously, just the fact that he went for the battle group instead of the mechanized, the obviously means a faster P4. But we do have the steward being built. Um, it all depends on how well Isolder executes the flanks now. Right, 50 kills set up, just defending this cutoff, forcing the infantry to go elsewhere. Flax on its way, as DevM just declared. We've got the lieutenant thinking of pushing into the centre. A low health folks grenadier won't stand a chance. Yes, the two squads sitting in the same sandbag. Really good flank from Kimbo, though, to get the east side again under his control. Yeah, he's done well there. He's doing well in the west as well. That low health folks grenadier, however, leading models there quite quickly. Ooh, massive push away, actually. He's losing a lot of ground now. Yeah, he really needs the flak after him, though. Speak of the devil, here he comes. Will we see a Silda? I mean, will he be a, as aggressive as USF requires, Devon? He's a fantastic player, but he, and he does pull the trigger occasionally, but he's very mm. controlled most of the time. Does he quite have it from an aggressive standpoint? Let's see if he does. I think he does, honestly. Uh, he knows that the faction needs to be played aggressive to be effective, and he's really good at playing to the faction's uh, strengths, usually, so he knows. He knows what he needs to do. Don't forget, we're on about educated aggression here. The only player in the world that can do uneducated aggression is Von Ivan. And that's because he has a deal <laughs> with the devil. He doesn't need manpower preservation, <laughs> it doesn't work. He just... <laughs> he doesn't need infantry, he just needs vehicles. Exactly. Ketan Verf and Folks Grenadiers push up M20s forced away. Nice shot there. That, yeah, that was a good shot. A uh, rifle nade is going to be used on the flak apra. Well, that'll hinder its movements for a while. Isildur will now be able to cement his control in this east. But again, you see the difference between this game and the past game. The map control that Isildur has and the pressure that he's uh, putting on Kimbo right now is immense. Certainly as we got into the Isildur zone now, that early to mid game. The bits before the pan the the medium armor arrives, that's when Isildur starts to thrive. He starts to work his way back in. Probably going to look now for one of her extensions from Kimbo with the Rakatan and try to get it. Because the Rakatan isn't full HP. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's very low health actually, and Lieutenant sees it. And backs away. Rifleman pushes in. Flax protecting the flank from the M20 as the rifles arrive. Oh, we've got double G43, double Stern Gavez. A lot yep. more DPS now for the OKW. Yeah, now OKW really starts to scale. He just needs the vet now. But easy, I think he's just looking for that bracket and one over extension is, is all his other needs. And with a misses, makes his presence known. 50 cows looking to escape with its one pip of veterans to there. Second Raket and Verfa for Kimbo. He's become a lot more um, more conventional, hasn't he, with some of his uh, patience and build orders. Yeah, he has. Uh, he used to be really aggressive and just really chaotic. I don't see that anymore. Credit to him as well. I think one of the biggest uh, reasons for that was uh, just the arrival of Isildur. He, he started to ask questions. He started to work the tack map into his game. So Kimbo challenging Isildur has been six months in the making, really. Probably longer. Yeah, let's see if... Uh... If he can actually do something about that, though, now that he's playing against him. 
probably the, I think the first big major uh, kind of final. I know it's the upper final, but it could be headed to the grand final. The loser will have to go up against the winner of CN Major K. But um, we're seeing possibly the culmination of Project Kimbo 2.0 where he works his way into being more traditional and a little bit more well-rounded. Maybe he can be the true challenger to a soldier's throne. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, I think he can still do the mid-game a little bit better with the advantages that he has in the early game. I think he has the early game really nailed down. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, he just he needs now to work on snowballing those advantages. And the transition. The moment. Yeah. Sometimes it's mass retreat is necessary to keep manpower just so you can make sure you get your fuel acquisitions acquired at the correct time I guess anyway we, mm -hmm. he's protecting the flak a little bit better than Isildur did he's got his Panzer Fusil Lee's marauding on bodyguard duty right now no the major is already out it's really rushing the possibly the M4C Sherman I'm uh, not the M4C the M4A3 Sherman yeah, the 76 mil regard. Yeah. yeah. There's so many different Shermans. It's because the Americans made them all different factories all over the United States, and everyone had a different way of making it. It's the 50 cals in jeopardy there. Oh, no. Oh, that could be a steal. The Major can't do much. He could write it down on his notepad, perhaps, but that's about it. That's actually pretty big. Two M I mean, one MG to Kimbo to control Ooh, the game. Silda is going to show some aggression, is he? No. I don't, I don't think he'll overextend. I, th I think he knows that he can go. Okay, now the flak after he's super low, he's going for it. Right, Stuart's pushing around the back of the flak and he gets oh, him regardless. No. Good take out by Silda with the bazooka from the house. Stuart watches on. We Kimbo, haven't had not the... like this. <laughs> no, indeed. This could be 3 1 to a silver if he keeps this up. This is the death of just one unit, though. Got a decent fuel income after the Panzer authorization, so it'll be halfway to Panzer IV. Yeah, I think his Yildar is going to get a hold of the fuel points now, so that before is going to be delayed. Um, I think Kimbo overextended a bit after that uh, MG victory. Coach trying to survive more arrive and we've got a flank from the Panzer Fusilier as they throw a grenade on the... Oh, but it barely does anything at all. Maybe he can take it out. Maybe another good win. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Not again. Oh, is he going to do it? Oh, he stopped at the, wrong, the last moment. Is he going to go for the Faust and the Rakan Berth? Now, what a Faust! Here it comes! Stuart down. M20 comes to the rescue, perhaps. He's got enough, and he's going to retreat with that. He just got that off the M20 for some reason. Yeah, but it's the rifles and the rear echelons as well, I guess. He didn't quite have enough. He's also going to harvest the uh, flak for fuel. I'll get him closer to the Panzer IV. Well, the good thing is that his healer still has a lot of manpower stockpiled, so it's not like the game is over in any way. This game's got legs, Dem, and it's uh, gonna last a while. We're in for a treat here, everybody. Yeah, so just the classic Crossroads game. <laughs> <laughs> this, this this isn't the players playing, Dev This is just Crossroads playing itself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's teleport ourselves to 45 minutes time when it's a tense battle for the central victory point. Yeah, put, put the game at two times speed. I think <laughs> it's uh... Unfortunately, Dev, I can't speed up time itself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can. I thought you could. I wish I could. Yeah. He's still there being very cheeky in the center here, always looking out for where Kimbo is positioning his MGs and his Rakatans. Very important to get that uh, vision in the center. Got uh, Kimbo's coming back on the standard territory points in the west, so that's the. Uh, Manpower being saved for the Sherman, I guess. Yeah, and the Sherman is out. I'm not sure how well the Sherman will will do because two Rakatans are in the field. Not much veterancy on them. Quite yet. It's got four Faust platforms as well, so uh, quadruple jeopardy for the Sherman. 
Uh, yeah, um, I'm not sure how he's using to play around the Raketans, it's a tough position to be in. Yes, Hans Fusely is. Kettenwerfer pushes up. Kimbo's getting super aggressive now in the east. Got the M20 up against the Stern Pioneers. And we have some good smoke usage so the Sherman can get some shots in. Nice, keeping himself out of the way. And it can attack ground the Panzer Fusiliers through the fog. Shepard's waiting to get that pendulum mount. Both Rakettenwerfers are setting up now. Panzer Fusilier keeps the cutoff away from Isilda's hands. This is a really good passage of play for Kimbo. Rakettenwerfers yeah. find the Sherman. They don't quite have the range to follow up. Sherman's going to survive for now. Bit of deforestation there. Yeah, Panzer Fusilier is tracking this rear echelon, stopping him taking the fuel. That means we're going to have double fuel very soon. M20 hits Vet3 and gets that speed boost. Now zipping around the map. 12 kills actually enough with that. Not too shabby at all. Rakettenwerf is thinking of it, but he smokes his way out of there. And here comes the Panzer IV. One of those powerful tanks in Company Heroes. The OKW Panzer IV. Hmm. I don't think Isildur has the right amount of counters now for the P4. Um, the Sherman is all he has, and the Sherman can get zoned out by the Rakettans. Oh, the Silda's been a bit uh, cheeky in the south, pushing away the Stern Pioneers of the Rakettenwerfer. With that Vet 3 M20, here comes that Panzer 4. Oh, Panzer Fusilier is throwing a decent grenade there. Could he even wipe the weapon? No, they're suppressed. No such luck. Yeah, but how is he going to deal with the P40? I, I just don't see it. Certainly not with the M20. <laughs> oh, maybe still with the M20, actually. Very lucky escape. Very narrow and lucky escape. And here's that tank artillery. That's right. Tank artillery. I wish I was in the design committee meeting when that one was uh, implemented. Also, when Still. tank grenades were implemented as well, Dev. I wish I was in that design committee meeting. I wish I was in all of them, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Still a pretty costly ability, though. 80 munitions. You would have just done a graphical overhaul to Co. 1, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Hey, when you have the superior game, why, uh, why change it? <laughs> You would have said, come to Heroes 1, I 2. <laughs> and you see is starting to get a hold of uh, the West Field now. We do have a shoe mine waiting as well if the captain gets too plucky. Very important securing of this victory point for Isildur. He was starting to bleed out there. Panzer 4 pushes in for its second kill of the game. It's not a lot of pressurization so far, but it's good to get a few kills as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he also went... I didn't notice, but Isildur went for the captain now. Yeah, he's going to need M180 guns, he feels. Not enough um, OKW players ever, ever consider backtacking for a Stuka Zufus, but you really feel like on crossroads, and in one of these grueling battles where the Allied player hunkers down in the southeast quadrant, it wouldn't be a bad idea, would it, you know? Just to polish them off. Mm -hmm. I feel like a second P4 can almost in every scenario do more than a Stuka. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the tried <laughs> so and that's tested why. methodology. Yeah, the tried and tested. <laughs> the algorithm for fair match or OKW play at high level is: Do you have a Panzer IV? If so, build a second Panzer IV. <laughs> do you have two Panzer IVs? <laughs> <laughs> if so, build the third one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's better, always better to have a generalist. That's. Uh, in this guy's yeah. capable of doing everything. 
He's still, he's still there. Oh! He's, he's bucking the trend as Kimbo. Banter. Oh, we have they have a stationary. We do indeed have a space inspection. Papier and Bitter. And the Sherman's going to answer the call. We don't need a TV license. We don't watch live TV. Please leave us alone. It's <laughs> a joke for British people out there. I think everyone can relate, though. <laughs> Decent series, to be honest. I mean, I know none of the games have been particularly epic, but it's good to get to an ace game. It just gives you that jeopardy, that kind of excitement. If we're headed there, it does feel like we are, though, doesn't it, Devon? Yeah, it does. Um, do you know who has choice? I'm not sure who has most CPs. In my one million years of casting games, I've never ever written the victory points down. <laughs> <laughs> I told myself when I started casting ESL, I was like, right, I'm going to get really professional. I'm going to start doing things like write victory points down. Has it ever happened? As a player, Devon, can you honestly say that you write the victory points down? No, I don't. I just, None uh, of us ever have. <laughs> yeah. If this was a pro scene, we definitely would be doing that, right? <laughs> kind of speaks volumes. Here comes the Panther. That Sherman is going to be very much on the run from this point on. It's days yeah. are numbered. No AT gun out as well, so... All he has uh, is the bazookas from the rear Regiment squad. Oh, there it goes. The tank artillery takes out the machine gun. In the far distance there. As the Sildas days are numbered. Axis OP, we're heading to a fifth deciding game. Where yeah. The, uh, is Yildar had a great early to mid game, I would say, and then he just uh, he just fell off, the, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, it, it's hard to keep up with OKW. If you do like a small mistake as USF, um, you can get super behind. Your map would be great for game five, Mill Road, because Mill Road is decidedly allies OP map, isn't it? So that would be good. Yeah, I think Mill Road is a very decent map for any faction. Maybe uh, I say, it, I say uh, it's not complete. It's one of the two best maps in the game, along with Amelie Fields. But um, you know, allies have a slightly higher win percentage in tournaments over Axis in the last couple of years. That's mm. all I'm referring to. It's not allies win every time, of course. Um, so it's going to make it a bit more interesting, I think, if it is Amelie. Maybe you've got one of the refs in chat. Maybe Miku could confirm the uh, map for me. Panther. Hits the M20 there. As he's fighting hard and strong for this victory point, but may even nearly loses his life because of it. Yeah, the problem here for Isilda is really the unit composition from Kimbo. He has no way to deal with the Rakatans. That, that's the big problem once you get to the late game stages as USF against OKW. You really have no way to deal with the Rakatans. No, they're such tricky customers. Yeah. Genuinely, this Panther is just going to be... It's hard countering a Soldier Sherman now. I mean, the Panther... Uh, the Paris, Panzer IV was already pretty much a counter. Soft counter. Or oh, tank artillery. So, Pine is pushing, checking for mines. Yeah. That they need to. Kimbo is just continuing to put on the pressure because if he pressures his Yildar, he has to keep reinforcing the squads and then he doesn't have the manpower for like a second Ikigan or a second Sherman. That's what I'm saying, the, the play of Kimbo has become so much more cautious and professional over the last year. I mean, he's checking for M20 mines here because he knows the M20 has been on the field all this time. So he's just gotten that, you know, yeah, much more the, polished. The Beating Silda down here. It's one of those in combat sports as a referee, you'd be so wanting to throw the uh, sorry, not throw the towel, but call the match there. Oh, that five fans of using is good die to the rifleman M1. Grants, can they finish the job? There oh, they, they go. 
shot in the back. Now he needs uh, three more of those. He does. He's got the M1 AT gun. 57 mil gets a good shot on the Panzer IV. Escapes with a whisker of health. Got another Vet 5 Panzer Fusilier that could die. Could this be the grand comeback of Isilda? Not wanting to go down without a fight. I uh, still has to get that uh, center MG out of the building if he wants to survive. The VPs are ticking down. He doesn't have oh. much time. Oh no, have you seen... Oh, he's going for a Panzer IV. I thought he was going for a Tiger. So I was going, oh no. <laughs> he's getting close to Tiger Except territory. Your selfie. If you have one P4, what's, <laughs> what's the next step? <laughs> he misclicked and got the Panther. It was a misclick, you see. Yeah. Back in base, he's... Um... Returning soon to finish the game off, but to be honest, he's held this. He's got a stolen Dushka holding the central victory point down. It's all about this western victory point. Neutralizes and stops the bleed of 23 VPs. But for how long? He's got the coaxial and pimple mount gunners of the Panther destroying him, and then a rare anti infantry shot from the Panther's main cannon, though. I think he's already just trying to tire out Kimber a bit. Trying everything, yeah. I mean, this game definitely does feel very over. It's like an Atigan being, being built, but I don't think it will get here in time. Uh, VPs are uh, back to the bleed. Transmission just exploded there. That wasn't even due to the anti tank grenade. Just That's four pushes in. Gets a good shot away. Yeah, this squad. Uh, did it die there in the center? Uh, I don't think so. Fair enough. First grenade is pushing and uh, spot there. Second Panzer IV tags in for the first one. M20 down. down. Oh, we've got a push in from the Sherman. Looking for the Panther. Just a little bit foolish. Raketenwerf is on the yeah. retreat path. 10 PPs now. This has not been crowd pleasing. This has just been letting the VPs tick down and play for time. From Asilda. Just play psychologically. Say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going into this ace game and I'm going to give it everything I can. What do you think is going to win uh, the ace game now? I just. Um, I have to wait for the factions and maps to tell you that, mate. I don't have enough info right now. As the Sherman's taken <laughs> out, VPs tick down. And we have an ace deciding game. It's on.
Hello there, and welcome to an ace deciding game between the mighty world champion of Company of Heroes. It's Isilda as the Soviets on North. What the hell is this? It's long yeah. res. It's been a long least... time since we've seen this, Dev. Uh, since my Company of Heroes won this. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and he's up against Kimbo, who is uh, the underdog, but he has done really well up until this point. His early games have been executed in a very nicely manner. Um, now it's up to Kimbo to see if he can redo the last game and finish up the series. What do you think, Ayi? Who wins now that you know the factions? Oh, 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 gosh. Okay, the odds of an Isilda victory were, let's say, he was the favourite and Kimbo was the underdog. But now Kimbo has Axis, and as we all know from today's activities, Axis OP. But not only are Axis OP DevM, it's on Longris, the most fa one of the most famous Axis OP maps in history. And one of the biggest reasons, DevM, is because Longris is a little bit better as, as the South player. It just is. The cutoff's easier to keep, the fuel's easier to keep, etc. So not only is he Vermat, he's Vermat on Longris. It's now anybody's game to win. This has been blown wide open. This is the mighty world champion, Isilda, and it's a Kimbo who's damn good today as Axis on Longris. It's going to be special. Yeah, it is. Um, I still think that Kimbo probably hasn't practiced the map that much. Uh, it's not a map that you usually expect to play, so there might be some uh, chances that Isilda can hold on until he can get that T70. Another, good, another interesting thing about this map, ladies and gentlemen, well, probably gentlemen, mostly, and the very few <laughs> ladies amongst you, um, is that Longris demands a different build order. Yes, you can play the traditional build orders on it, but it, it's not optimal. It's often a little bit more skewed to maybe a few more machine guns, maybe a, f a mortar. Mortars are actually pretty damn good on Longris. It often sees different build orders utilised. I'm not saying these players will do that, but... Uh, in, in history, that has been the case. Yeah, we already see Kimbo uh, gaining, you know, splitting the map 50-50 and not going for the cutoff just yet, uh, but he has regained control of his own fuel. He's doing that very quickly, but combat engineers with a flamethrower pushing in for this cutoff, possibly. Mm -hmm. Grenadiers are only two man here, so they're going to be very weak to, to defend the, the point. Yeah, he's uh, going to dislodge the Grenadiers from the building already. Um, I think that uh, Isildur is playing the early game well. Uh, usually, if you can keep the center under your control here and get this building, uh, you are in a very good position against Osir. So basically, as long as you have your cutoff, right? <laughs> basically. And right now, these Grenadiers are fighting for their lives. They're getting burnt alive. The yeah. MG has to help out and has to be quicker to help out. What was it doing in the north there? Yeah, he, he was distracted with the conscript squad that was behind the green cover truck. Um, not, not really worth it. Welcome to Edge of Nothing in chat, girl that likes war games. Welcome. Hope you enjoy your stay. Now you'll have 50 messages. Ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's always good. I always like to make everybody welcome, especially uh, to not making it such a horrendous late 20s, early 30s sausage party. My YouTube my YouTube statistics are quite shocking. I had a company here as one video, Devem, right? It had 20,000 yeah. views as we live and breathe. YouTube reports that of those 20,000 people, not a single one is female. <laughs> I was expecting like 99%, first, but no, that's even worse. I've always had 90 point, 98 to 99%. It's always been there. It's gotten even worse for Go 1. So big welcome. Thank you. As the pioneers push in, the MGs oh, yeah. getting ready. The conscripts are buying time. We also have uh, the Grenadiers go northeast. Just doubled out taking this fuel. Kimbo really wants it. A bit of slack play there. I still have to say that um, Isilda is doing a really good job. Just the fact that Kimbo doesn't have that center position with the MG and he's even going to have to retreat the MG maybe. It's it's really big, it's huge for the Soviet player. Enemy 
friends force away that conscript. He's, I told you he's doubling up on it, but here comes the combat engineer. He might not end up taking it. This grenade was going to take the standard territory point. That's what I say. It's a bit slack play by Kimbo. Yeah. Um, I think he has misplayed the early engagements, and that has bled out into the rest of the game. Because it's like you know, it's like a domino effect. When you lose the first one, then you have one less unit in the field, and your opponent outnumbers you, and then he wins the next engagement. It's kind of like a domino effect in a way. Very true. That's it. You make a mistake. One mistake leads to another. Is often uh, another good parable there, and, and uh, yeah, that's what we've been left with here. Kimbo's not playing badly though. He's Getting the second victory point now, utilizing a Silver's cover. silver has gone back because he must have healing up. Uh, yes, he does, and he's just uh, yeah, he does. Tank um, Italian command up ASAP. Do you think we'll see M M17 be... this time? Uh, sorry, what? No, go on. What, what point you were going to make? Uh, I was going to say that Isildur's uh, timing on this T70 is going to be pristine. It's going to be here as soon as possible. So we are hitting now the six minutes and thirty seconds mark. And this building is up, and he almost has the resources for the T70 already, so he's going to hit very soon. Let's hope he is. I was going to ask, sorry, do you reckon he'll go for the uh, quad mount yet again? But seems like we have your answer, and look at that T70 timing. As soon as he had the manpower and fuel, he literally clicked it immediately. Not a wasted millisecond here. It really tells you a lot when the T70 hits the field at the same time as the 2 2 <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. Just goes to show the harassment of the fuel in the northwest and just the ability to keep all these standard territory points on lockdowns really pay dividends for a Silder now. And that dividend comes in the form of that little pyramid of destruction. The T70 yeah. coming onto the field. Uh, he still has to be very careful. Uh, Kimbo is, you know, grabbing up territories on the right side of the map. Um, it's still a very easy map for Austria to lock down with double MG, double pack gun. So you really need to make this mid-game as good as possible. Little standoff. Oh, in the northeast, it's going to go bad for Kimbo now that the T70 rise, but it's the Kimbo. Sorry, it's the T70 of 2020 onward. If that was the old T70, it would have gone on a mad squad wiping journey. Yeah, if it was the whole old T70 with this timing, that would have been very rough. It would have been incredibly rough indeed. We have a, a sprinted Grenadier there, just keeping on the line, but getting out of dodge for now. Kimbo's battling back despite the T-70's presence. Yeah, it's just the openness of the map. Uh, it really helps out the Grenadiers and the MGs a lot. Back 40 arrives. Northwest with 2-2-2 two, two, two on a single kill. Can't do much against the sandbags, of course. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Let's see how Isildur tackles the map overall. Uh, I think he might go for, again, a double MG kind of uh, build order to lock out the right side of the map. Combat Engineer's stay is now over due to the sandbag's cessation of existence. It's amazing, isn't it, that Devon, that people just, like, just stand there until the sandbag dies. It's like, uh, you can't hit me, you can't hit me, and then send back this phrase, and it's just <laughs> easy to read that. Basically. So much staying power is brought by just building them. Yeah. You know what? Koan had rather than Koan. <laughs> yeah, that's going cool, definitely. <laughs> the sandbags didn't uh, feel off the map when you build them. Yeah. It's like one tiny sandbag, and in KOTU you build one, and you can kind of block the whole road with just one sandbag. Let's hope that in uh, KO3 they take the best of both games and make a monstrous Gummy Heroes sequel. That we're all hoping they do, even in pre-alpha it's looking pretty decent, let's say. So let's hope a finished game's gonna be that, uh, that dreamland of the best of both worlds. Finally, rifle laid on retreat! And a pack Almost. shot into the T-70. However, the 2 2 has been pushed away. We've got a just on the side of the conscript as well. Kimbo's going for the jugular here. This is a very dangerous cutoff maneuver. Um, Kimbo doesn't want to let his other have any resources to scale into the late game. Firing, th firing through the bush here, just trying to dislodge this conscript. Where he is going to deal with the conscript and Dushka pushing up. The cutoff has been taken. 
Kimbo survived that very early, well-timed T70, and he's, um... Yeah, he's pushing onwards. I'm gonna say it, and I'm, I'm gonna say it without fear. I'm just gonna say it, because I know, I know, I think this is true. Isilda has to play differently as Soviets on this map against Wehrmacht. He cannot just go the same build orders he would go on any other map in any other situation. And for me, that, that me genuinely means, and he hasn't got a commander that helps him, indirect fire. We're going to want to see a Katusha quite quickly. Even a sniper, back to tier 1 and a sniper would be good, DevM. This is Longras. This is a whole different uh, ball game. Yeah, it is. I actually think that the sniper starting this map is very competitive um but you don't see many players adapting to the map um uh, again Isolder is one of those players that takes pride in how well he executes a certain build order and he's uh, very used to play with this kind of uh, build order so seeing Isolder change his build order isn't very common a lot of people in chat are also reminding us mine detonates oh he didn't plant it, my bad. Are also reminding us that two Ziskuns with the barrage is very good on, on this. Why need a mortar? <laughs> or a Katusha? Or a sniper when you can build two Ziskuns? Very very well said, chat. He could also just hold spam with that. We have a teenage on the 22 being thrown. Yeah, he's pushing in. Mm, no, actually, he's going to follow up on that. Good news. Is... Go on, sorry. Uh, Isildur is creeping up through the map. He's already getting the fuel on the east side. Uh, Sisgan out and he has all the map control now on the center road. He also is now uh, taking the fuel, building a sandbag, so he's going to be there a while. Saw this eject into space. It's now just landed. I think it's a... What is it is? It's a big wheelbarrow or something. Are you looking at the map again? <laughs> My eyes are always caught by moving objects, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Very ADHD kind of caster sometimes, but anyway. Conscript's getting... Uh, ah. Silda senses that the 2-2 is coming in and he doesn't fancy it anymore. That's the skill profile of... Uh, or the risk profile, rather, of Silda. There's a rifle nade on retreat. That finally yeah, finds the T-70. He has been trying to get one of those retreat grenades for a while now. That's greatness. That retreat was greatness shown by Isildur. Very, very few players, Devon, would would have, wouldn't have, would have hung around to complete the cap on the fuel. The fact that he did means the conscript is still alive. And that is prime risk aversion and analysis. He just sees the situation, he senses it's not quite right, and he gets out of there. And you know what? He was right to do so. It wasn't right. There was a, a rifle nade on retreat waiting for him. And um, if he's yeah. hung around a second longer, he'd be dead. He knows that it's already a victory, that he decapped the kill and the opponent has to... Oh! That, oh chat that, was right, was Devon! <laughs> chat was right! All you need is this barrages! You don't need to change your build order! Madness! Still three more. <laughs> <laughs> and he's setting up again, I think the MG will die. Be lucky to survive, I tell ya. Also, this now goes into oh, anti-tank gun mode. So close. Tantalizingly close from an Isildurian perspective there. I tell you what, this game's heating up nicely now. Well, a decent chunk yeah, of manpower is. for Izzy as well. He's, uh, he's sitting on a decent bank of commodities. The seconds is gone. Enemy are oh, never mind, you can cancel. <laughs> cancel that. I'm not sure. I think it's better for Easy just to take up instead of the second season. gun. Let's, uh, let's survey the stats at this point in time. See, Kimbo's KD is pretty okay-ish compared to the Conscript's low cost on the graph scene. You can see army value-wise, it's neck and neck points held. You can see the tail of the battle thus far. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's heating up nicely, this 14-minute fifth Deciding ace game of the upper bracket final. It's been good, eh, Devon? Yeah, it has. Uh, I actually wasn't expecting Kimbo to bring uh, Isilda to an ace game. Were you? No, not by his psychology <laughs> of asking so many questions about the rules this morning. I was like, oh, for God's sake, he's not gonna. 
He'll take it seriously, but as soon as it goes wrong, he'll be like, meh, take me to the lower bracket, baby. I'll be fine. Um, and then I'll obviously come up, come out guns blazing in the best of seven grand final next Saturday. But yeah, no, fair credit to the man. He's played like a professional. It's been great. Rifle nade on the conscripts. Linger for a while longer. Is there a trap setting up? There is a disc gun. Yes. Yeah, uh, I don't think that Isildur wants really to push forward. He's just you know, trying to buy time to cut the other side of the map and be annoying. Yeah, definitely. It's all uh, harassment right now. He's got some yeah. edge here. Just chilling in the south at the moment. He's clearly concentrating on the north. That 22 almost went down for to the teenage and uh, he's been shot. Do we have a sniper? We have oh, a sniper yes. indeed. It's sniper time. Longer is such a long map for that scope G43 rifle. Now we just need to see the sniper dying to a Ziz barrage. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> prime play. Doesn't matter. It's like I don't need to backtech to get the counter snipe. I'll just snipe you with my Ziz barrage. Pack finds the T70 there. It's going to be get away. Two shots in. We have a new sniper under our command. And there's also a second pack, yeah. Right now it's sitting in base, but Kimbo does have the AT covered. Certainly does. He's got the AT and the AI right now. Uh, whose army do you prefer? I'd, I'd say now with the advent of the sniper, I'm going to start saying uh, Kimbo's army, to be fair. <laughs> Not the best rival for the sniper. Usually yeah, spotting no, for your no. sniper is a good way to start. I think that for now, Kimbo's unit composition is better, but it's one of those things that um, will change soon. Uh, because when Isilda starts pumping out the Katyusha and maybe the SU-85s, uh, I think it does uh, change. So for now, Kimbo's unit composition is looking better, yeah. Also, the staying power of uh, Isilda will be a lot stronger now. It's got seven-man cons. The sniper's going to be spoilt for choice in a target-rich environment. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Isilda will be able to complete caps and keep on in there for longer. The good thing is that Kimo doesn't need to worry about the counter snipe, so you can literally just sit down the sniper in the center of the map and keep sniping. Oh, nearly very fateful is this for us. And he followed him! What is that spread? Let's make a bet here. Uh, will the Ziz gun kill the sniper eventually or not? Well, so it sounds like you want it to die to the sniper. I'm going to say a Dushka kills it. Kimbo goes AFK for a second. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to say that the Ziz Barrage will eventually kill the sniper. Okay. Just surveying the situation now as the MG goes forward. Pack comes into play to help out seven man comms. And the MG's not set up until Kimbo needs a mass retreat from this situation. He's already taking the pack out of there. And there goes the rest of his house of cards. Sniper keeps firing away. Four kills. Five kills now. That's that Gren's really low. He needs to be really careful though. Looks like he's going to be fine-ish. No, still die. I tell you. Is that a wipe? Maybe. No. Oh, that last salvo for the Muslim against needs to be a bit sharper. Zilder is actually, all things considered, holding the center really well. He's up against a sniper, um, and also LMG Grenadiers, and he's still holding the right side of the map overall. 2-2 in peril. This is now out of range in the north. T-70 gets fausted. No follow-up though. Okay, so Isilda can now build a Sherman. Two packs and uh, four Faust platforms. It won't have the easiest time of things. Maybe with the T7 pushing in from the side, it could be a little bit shorter. Yeah, I, I, was, train. I was thinking that he would go either for a Katyusha or a Sherman, but he does choose the Sherman. It's always the safe choice. 
what's interesting from Kimbo here, uh, DevM, he's floated fuel yet. Oh, there's the Panzer IV, but he's got 80 fuel in the bag. He could have had it a lot sooner. Yeah, um, I'm not sure why he delayed the Panzer IV, honestly, but probably just doing a lot of things at the same time. Now, I do think that uh, Kimbo is going to have the superior unit composition with the P4, double AT gun, sniper. Uh, it's hard for Isolder to hold that if uh, Kimbo pushes. It's going to be dependent on that Katyusha to wipe out the pack guns and the sniper eventually. Oh, mine here! Good job the sniper didn't hit it. We could have been both been wrong. It's very purple looking Panzer four. Oh, it's just the shade of the trees. Sniper's now up to 14 kills. He's paid for himself, so now we get into manpower attritional zone. Kimbo is Inside. overall playing this very safe. He is. Panzerfall's thinking about attack round through the bushes there. Grand's protecting the sniper still. Conscript's forced away. Playing the map very well now, Kimbo is. Yeah, he is, and that sniper is probably starting to annoy Zilder. Kind of a mantra in a lot of uh, top level coming here as battles. If you do not counter the sniper, you will lose the game. Manpower is king. Especially the later the game goes, it gets uh, really important to preserve that manpower. A little bit sniper on the front foot now, going straight in there. Well, lucky for him, I don't think there's any more mines in, in the way. So Kimbo has some options now. I mean, a lot of uh, the Wehrmacht's pattern would usually be uh, tier 4 at this point. Um, especially on this map, do you really think it's another Panzer IV on this map, Devon? Or is it just um, one? I think it's dependent on how well he perceives that his unit composition is uh, performing. In this case, because he's doing so well, I, I'd imagine that he's going for tier 4 for the Panzer Warfare. Okay, fair enough. But he did go for a second P4, anyway. <laughs> ah. That's certainly working for him so far. Grand's pushed up. Five I guess... Axis victories in a row, could it be? I think so. I guess he's comfortable enough with Sniper to deal with the... AT guns uh, and the MGs that his Zilder has. Nice Faust combination there. Sherman goes for the crush though! <laughs> How did they survive that? We fight bravely for the Reich. The enemy is down oh, I think that the T70 we might die to the B4 push. Yeah, there's no one to help. One more shot required whilst this is going on. It seems okay. Let's keep the C17 in our sights as it dies. There it goes. Oh no, the Sherman pushes in. Trying to get past a past a rare aggressive push by Isilda. Wants blood. He's past. Oh, another pack hits him. Will he get away? He smokes out the other pack. And he, he tries knew. to get out of there. He knew he needed to do something to come back from that T70 loss. And he pushed. But the second P4 is here. And I think it's going to hunt the Sherman. It is. He's listening for it. Kimbo is Sherman. Was that too aggressive from Isilda? Oh, first shot was oh, a no. miss. He's got... Oh, and he's recruiting the pack. He's... He's taking it out there. Sherman's keeping his frontal armor facing. Second shot. Oh, he, oh, it he burns up. There it goes. Another Panzer IV pushes in. Decrewed there, thanks to the Pintle Mount Gunner. Silda with some good driving, but doesn't seem to have worked overall. And now we've got the Sniper hitting Vet2. We've got LMG Grenadiers on the march. Pack is taken yet again, but here comes the sprinting. Grenadiers decrewing the pack for the third time. In a minute. That is very rough for his Hilder. Honestly, I think that might be game just because he can't reinforce all his squads now. Look look at the amount of uh, squads he needs to reinforce. 
so much. He, he is getting us a Sherman, but now he's up against two Panzer Fords. It's going to be really tough. Two Panzer Fords, two packs. Oh, this is going to mind not even. Oh, he hit the tractor instead. <laughs> he's trying to get outside the turret boundary. One shot, that's all he needs now. Oh no, he's going to destroy the AT gun now. And that was his only AT gun. Combat needs need to get there. Oh! <laughs> oh combo, no combo from the packs. And the wolf is at the door now and he's howling, he's baying for blood. Looks like Kimbo going through to the grand final. By the way, his victory point situation to get the mighty Axis, who clearly seemed overly powerful. He had 787 victory points. Sherman comes out, tries to get past the Panzer IV, takes it out. He got it. The sniper's watching on as well. Wait, I don't think oh, anyone is playing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. Server. <laughs> the server. See, the AI is better than Asilda, regardless. It's GG, well played. Asilda slashes L and he bows out and goes to the lower bracket final. Kimbo is your first grand finalist of the International Classic. throughout the patches yeah Devon was just saying it's usually like this axis seems to have an easier time overall in the patches and stuff and it's um yeah I, I can't remember sometimes where allies were OP I mean Operation Charlie Fox USF um back in 2015 you had yeah. um the war paint championships with Soviets penal guards meta um, but other than that, I would tend to agree that we've had more patches in tournaments where Vermat or OKW have been the flavor of the month kind of thing. I just think that faction design overall helps um, the faction never be super bad. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for example, USF, if uh, for some reason they were nerfed in some units, if you get behind, you have nothing, while Wehrmacht always has seemingly some way not to be useless so either that be vetted grenadiers or the sniper or even the mgs early game i feel like they always have a chance even if they are somewhat nerfed in that particular patch yeah uh, yeah i think allies overall uh have always been the problematic kind of factions <laughs> I just really hope. Now we've got Co3 on the horizon. It's crazy to say that live. And every time I say it, I'm, I, I, I feel scared I've broken an NDA. <laughs> say the words Co3 out loud. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, For years, I couldn't talk anything about it. Basically, yeah. But, um, dude, I think we should host over to Olvedi now because Major Kusanagi and Sienna won each in the first lower bracket final. And the winner of that will face Isilda afterwards. And Devon, we may have Isilda um, Kimbo 2 to, to cast next Saturday in a best of seven. Or maybe one of these two valiant combatants can uh, can come, come to the good here today. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see if Isilda can pull through the loser's bracket. Must be a new feeling for him. Ah. <laughs> What is this? I'm still. He thinks the tournament's over. He's not going to show up for the lower bracket later today because he's never, he's never played it before. Um, Zarok, we are going to work on some more versions of Crossroads because I, I realised the players ran out of Crossroads variants today, which we can't have. So we're going to have seven VP for the best of seven. It's going to start on seven VP Crossroads, two games, five VP two games, three VP two games, and if they get to the seventh ace game, it will be one VP Crossroads. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna just basically do the Russian dolls of Crossroads VP variants next next Saturday. Yeah, sounds very exciting. <laughs> Good. All right, <laughs> then let's let's raid Olvedi. Thank you for watching today. See us next Saturday as we cast the grand final from two p.m. BST. Be there or be square. Cheers. Bye, everyone. <laughs>